Ms. Baker. Here. Mr. Claybrook. Here. Ms. Doss. Here. Uh, Mr. Malazari. Here. Vice Chair Savage Downs. Present. Ms. Scurlock. Here. Mr. Chairman. Here. We have seven present. All right. Thank you. Uh, the Memphis and Shelby County Board of Adjustment is the oldest appointed governmental body in Memphis and Shelby County, established in 1925. The board hears appeals from administration of the zoning ordinance, requests for variances from the zoning ordinance and other requests as articulated by local zoning laws adopted pursuant to the enabling legislation. The eight members of the board are appointed, four by the mayor of Memphis and four by the mayor of Shelby County, with confirmation by the Memphis City Council or Shelby County Board of Commissioners. We serve without remuneration. At this time, I would like to swear in staff. You may all remain seated. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, Shelby God? I do. Right. Thank you. Uh, may I get a motion to approve the minutes from last month's meeting? Moves. Second. All right. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, uh, if you, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, those opposed, and the motion passes. Uh, Mr. Secretary, if you could give us our Secretary's report for the day and then explain the procedure for the meeting. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we do have a Secretary's report because this is January, and so we have our 2019 annual report uh, uh, spread on your desk and posted on our board website. I'll just go over very briefly the, the high points. This is organized in three major pieces. The first, speaking to uh, attendance. And um, with regard to attendance, Ms. Baker gets a gold star, uh, four out of four. And Mr. <laughs> Jackson gets a, a, a bigger gold star because he attended 12 out of 12. But unfortunately, we can't give him his gold star <laughs> because he's absent. <laughs> um, the next section talks about our caseload. We did have, uh, I, I have a, a, a bar chart here that goes back to 1986. We did uh, have a, our busiest year in about 30 years uh, this past year in 2019. And finally, the third section of the report talks about significant cases that we heard. In addition to that, Mr. Chairman, we just completed a scanning program uh, conducted uh, at cost with the University of Memphis that scanned about 14,000 cases that this board has heard in its 97 year history. Uh, and those are all indicated on our zoning atlas online. So if you go to our zoning atlas, you can turn on the board of adjustment layer and there are um, uh, a, a multitude of variance applications across uh, Memphis and Shelby County. Eventually, you will be able to click on that and download the PDF of the case, but we haven't quite got to that point yet. With that, Mr. Chairman, the procedure for this afternoon will be as follows. I will introduce each case as listed on the agenda. Copies of the agenda are on the back benches as well as at this uh, front table by Mr. Ragsdale. Uh, I will call out each case as they're listed on the agenda for each of those cases. Staff with the Office of Planning and Development will present a report with photographs, site plans, and conditions of approval uh, or justification for rejection. At the conclusion of the staff presentation, the applicant will present his or her case. Following that, supporters will have an opportunity to present testimony. And then finally, opposers will be given an opportunity. Based upon our rules of procedure, each side is given 10 minutes total. At the end of those 10 minute periods, uh, applicant supporters and opposition, the applicant will return for a two minute rebuttal. These times do not include Q&A time uh, between speakers and the board members. After that, the board will conclude the public hearing uh, and deliberate and then vote. If after the close of the public hearing, the board would like to reopen testimony, a two thirds vote is required and then we will hear both sides for an equal amount of time. All motions made by this board will be made in the affirmative. The private acts governing the board require the affirmative vote of at least five members to approve an application, regardless of the number of board members present. So here we have uh, seven members present, so we'll need a five-seventh vote to approve any matter on your agenda. Uh, the board may also vote to hold an application for a period not to exceed 90 days. 
All section numbers we refer to come from the Memphis and Shelby County Unified Development Code, which was adopted in 2010 by the City Council and the County Commission. I will introduce the entire UDC to make it part of today's record, thus dispensing with the reading of individual sections. This body is vested with the power to act on these cases before it under Chapter 922 of the Code. Mr. Chairman, I submit that all cases have been filed in proper order. All applicants have been notified of this hearing and all other notice requirements have been fulfilled according to the code. All right, thank you, Mr. Secretary. At this point, the board will establish a consent agenda. To establish the consent agenda, the secretary will call out each eligible case. If any member of the audience, staff, or board member objects to the case being placed on the consent agenda, he or she should do so by a show of hands when the secretary reads that case. Once the consent agenda is established, the board will vote on all cases placed on the consent agenda as a whole and will not hold individual public hearings on each case. Mr. Secretary, which items on our agenda today are uh, eligibly placed on consent? Mr. Chairman, uh, and as I do that, I'll also note we have two cases that have been withdrawn, uh, starting with the first one, uh, docket BOA 19105 at 5122 Crestview Road. This applicant has withdrawn this case and will resubmit um, in the next few months in anticipation of reopening his operation. Um, that brings us to number three, uh, docket BOA 19126, located at 45 South Idlewild. The applicant is Rosecrest LLC. The use districts are the RU4. Uh, district within the Midtown overlay and a plan development. The requests are from there. Uh, the request is our variances related to the front setback, the building height and the amount of parking spaces. Mr. Chairman, uh, as we were traveling up from the executive session, the applicant did get with our um, staff planner on this and was uh, concerned that the uh, staff report does not explicitly speak to the building height as built some 50 years ago. So I would like to offer a third condition. This is on page 14 of the staff report that reads, a height variance reflecting the structure as built is hereby approved. Just to make it clear that uh, that's the, the height variance we're approving. That brings us to agenda item number four, docket BOA 19127, located at the southeast corner of Union and Kimbrough. The applicant is Kimbrough LLC. The use districts are the CMU3 commercial, the R6 single family, and a historic overlay district. And the requests uh, are related to a use variance and various bulk variances related to the front setback, as well as parking. That brings us to agenda item number five, which like agenda item number one has been withdrawn by the, from, by the applicant um, after a further investigation revealed that no variances were required. Agenda item number six, Mr. Chairman has cards. So that'll pre bring us to agenda item number seven. That is docket BOA 20 hyphen one. The location is 735 North Holmes. The applicant is Abisco Ramos Ledesma. The use district is the RU1 duplex district, and the request is a variance from item 372B to allow an interior side setback of three feet where a five foot setback is required and a rear setback of eight feet where 20 feet is required. And as I read these off, if you have not filled out a card, I'm skipping over items with cards, but if you haven't filled out a card and you'd like a full pu public hearing, just raise your hand as, as we go through these. Um, number, agenda item number eight, Mr. Chairman, which is docket BOA 20 hyphen two, located at 1615 Union Avenue. The applicant is Valvoline Instant Oil Change. The use district is the CMU1 commercial district within the Midtown overlay. And the variances are related to a platted front setback and a streetscape plate. And the applicant is requesting a 30 day hold. But uh, per our discussion at executive session, if we would, uh, the, the purpose of the hold has been communicated to me to revise the site plan to reflect some of the concerns expressed by staff. So uh, let me ask the audience to raise their hand now if they would like to go ahead and have a hearing now or wait 30 days. Uh, um, 
Uh, we need everything expressed on the record. Um, let me do this. Let's pull that off consent. Because that was, that was not a solid yes. <laughs> so we want to make sure we have a hearing. Uh, number nine, we have a card. Number 10, docket BOA 20-4, located at 2499 Haish. The applicant is Carlos Ortiz. The use district is the R6 residential district. And the request is an encroachment into a platted front yard setback. Number 11, docket BOA 20 hyphen five, located at 1770 Lanier. The applicant is the Shelby County School Systems, um, school system, and the related to Watkins Overton High School. The request is uh, a variance from sub item 496E2G3 to replace an existing uh, fixed copy sign with a digital sign. That brings us to number Number 13, which is docket BOA 20 hyphen seven, located at 621 South Willette. The applicant is the Eric Clausen Revocable Trust. The use district is the R6 district within a historic overlay. And the requests are related to 272B2, 272D1B, and 272D6 to allow an accessory garage and dwelling unit to encroach into the required rear yard setback and be taller than permitted. Agenda item number 14, docket BOA 28, which is a modification to dockets BOA 6522 and 6875, located at 1520 East Brooks. The applicant is Wheel Estate Mobile Home Park, Memphis TN LLC. The use district is the Light Industrial EMP District, and the request, again, is a modification to those earlier approvals from 1965 uh, for a revised site plan. So that concludes the consent agenda, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, so let's see if we can get a motion from the board to approve the consent agenda as established by the secretary, would be a uh, approval and consent agenda items three, four, seven, 10, 11, 13, and 14. So moved. Second. Again, moved and seconded. I'll remind you to each, uh, the board, that by voting on the consent agenda, he or she affirms that he has uh, read the staff report in full agreement with the conditions. Mr. Secretary, may I get a roll call, please? Mr. Claybrook. Yes. Mr. Lazary. Yes. Vice Chair Savage Towns. Yes, I find that the standards of 9.22.6 of the UDC are being met. It would not be unduly detrimental to the properties in the vicinity. Ms. Scurlock. Yes. Ms. Baker. Yes. Ms. Doss. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Seven eyes. All right. Thank you very much. If you're here for cases 3, 4, 7, 10, 11, 13, or 14, you've been approved, so you can go ahead and go. You're done for the day. Uh, Mr. Secretary, would, would that what you call the first case from the regular agenda? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. That brings us to agenda item number two, which is docket BOA 19114, located 956 South 3rd Lucerne. The applicant is Andra L. White. The use district is the CMU1 commercial district and the RU multifamily residential district. And the request is a use variance to allow vehicle sales. Okay. Uh, is the applicant present? Oh, hey, how are you? Is there any opposition present today? Seeing none. We have cards. Oh, we do have cards. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see here. Mr. Penzis, if you could give us a presentation of this. Uh, Jeffrey Penzis with the Office of Planning and Development. This is BOA 19114, located at 956 South 3rd Street. The applicant is Andre L. White, and the request is a use variance from Section 2.5.2 to allow vehicle sales. Uh, the existing zoning is CMU1 and Residential Urban 3. This is the location map. This is located in the South Memphis neighborhood. And this is the vicinity map. The subject site is approximately 12 and a half, 12,000. 500 square feet. Uh, this is just the zoning map showing where the line of the CMU1 splits the subject site to the RU3. 
This is the land use map. It's primarily surrounded by industrial, civic, and there's some single family residential to the east. Uh, so and then, and also you can note that the existing adjacent land use to the west and north of the subject property is an illegally operating auto sales business that does not have any active zoning entitlement. And the Office of Construction Code Enforcement cited this operation on November 13th, 2019 to environmental court. Uh, and this is just an aerial of the subject property. And these are just some site photos of the subject property. Uh, so this was the approved site plan for the BOA back in 1956. Uh, at that time, they were granted uh, a use variance to allow a vehicle service and gas stations because part of the building goes into the RU3 district at the rear of the property. And also they had a zero lot setback for the rear. And this is, well, this is the site plan that uh, so this is the revised site plan that Mr. White had is handing out. It's been revised since this site plan. I believe the revised site plan is more in line with the conditions that were recommended by staff if the case were to be approved. And additionally, uh, Mr. Secretary Whitehead is handing out the <coughs> findings of fact responses by the applicant, which they have submitted since the completion of the staff report. Uh, so the South Memphis plan identified incompatible land uses as a factor leading to the decline of South Memphis and as a contributor to blight in neighborhoods. And as such, a comprehensive rezoning was approved by the Council of the City of Memphis on December 21st, 1999. The aforementioned rezoning resulted in the downzoning of this area in which the subject property lies in order to filter out uses deemed too intensive and incompatible with the stability of residential neighborhoods. This resulted in the vehicle sales use no longer being permitted by right as this use is not considered to be conducive to the stability of residential neighborhoods. And there have been several revitalizing efforts within this neighborhood to contribute to the uplifting of the community and improved streetscape. Uh, the following is a selection of those projects. And so this is the Calvary Rescue Mission. It was constructed in around 2018 and it's an expansion at 225 Lutheran Place. And this is a basically immediately east of the subject site and partially to the south as this enters, you can see. And this is essentially lodging for homeless men, but they also provide meals and counseling. Uh, so this is the GE Patterson Point. This was constructed in 2007 at 886 Latham Street. It is an 80 unit senior living facility, uh, 25 detached single family lots and four quad type lots that was developed in partnership with the Memphis Housing Authority. <coughs> And this is Mason Village, which was constructed <coughs> in 2018 at 339 E.H. Crump Boulevard. And it's a 77 unit townhouse development, a public and private partnership project with the City of Memphis Division of Housing and Community Development and the Memphis Housing Authority. And this is the Memphis 3.0 plan as the subject property is designated as a future land use of anchor neighborhood mix of building <coughs> types and the degree of change of accelerate. The proposed use of auto sales in this location is not considered to be a suitable, suitable development that aligns with the future land use designation, nor would it contribute to the revitalization of this community. And <coughs> the variance criteria. So in conclusion, the granting of this variance will caused a substantial detriment to the public good. It will substantially impair the intent and purposes of an adopted plan or code. It will be injurious to the neighborhood and the general welfare, and it will not be in harmony with the purpose and intent of the development code. And with that, we recommend rejection. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.
Thank you, Mr. Penzer. Are there any questions of staff at this time? Mr. Penzer's now, in 1956, it was um, zoned for gas station. Is that correct, or am I uh, reading yeah, that so correct? The, the rear, like, maybe 15% of the property is actually in the RU3 zoning. And at that time, they asked, I guess, for a use variance to have the service station building be there because they asked for a zero lot setback to the rear property line. Could the property still be used as a service station under that original 56 variant? Uh, if it adheres to everything, yes. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, would the applicant like to stand up for us real quick? And let's read so if you'll give your name and address for the record for us. Uh, my name is Tawanda Stace. The address is 956 at 3rd Street. Okay. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so for God? Yes, sir. All right. Go ahead. What do you have to tell us? Um, Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and board members. Um, we are here to request you to allow us to operate a new business similar to the others in the area that is directly across the street. Um, we don't want this building to, to continue to be an eyesore to the neighborhood. We recognize improvement next door to the homeless mission and wants to continue to look across our property with landscaping and do away with the chain link fencing. fencing. We will install borders around our property at the streets with gates at the entrance to meet state requirements. We will have to repair. We will have to repair anything that does not meet the codes of the construction code office when we apply for our U and O to do business. My experience lies in auto parts and services. I have been employed and currently employed with franchise auto parts stores in the city of number of years. Time from this area, and we do not wish to have <coughs> auto sales without it being a good looking, eye catching business in this area. Um, we would like to call your attention to finding a fax in our application for a use variance and we believe that properly being in two zones, residential and commercial justifies the request for auto sales. We will limit the amount of cars we can display and improvements we will make will help boost other properties to do the same. We understand the reason for the Memphis 3.0 plan, but today, five or, or even 10 years from now, the vision will not come about until redevelopment of a commercial comes with south of Crump Boulevard. If you see to it, allow us auto sales, we will be willing to accept a five year time frame and come back to you to approve that we can be a good neighbor and a viable business with any reasonable condition placed on us by this board. Um, thank you for your time and consideration. I will be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of the applicant? Are you all currently in business? Not at the moment. We're um, um, getting everything repaired now. I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, please. How, how long have you owned this property? We don't own it. Um, oh, okay. Um, we're leasing it. <coughs> is the lease or have you, it's a signed lease, you're paying rent already, yes. or is it contingent on you getting approval to have this business where it wasn't zoned for it? We're a paying rent. Well, we're paying rent already. Okay. And if you don't get the variance, you're still paying rent? Oh, yeah. Uh, another question. Uh, how did you find out you needed a variance? Um, well, we have a list of um, things that in order to um, become um, a dealer. And when I spoke with Burt Reynolds, he told me everything I had to have because I didn't know which direction to go. So he, him and his staff actually lead, uh, led me because um, I didn't know which applicant to application to apply for. And he told me, him and Mr. Whitehead and Mr. Chip told, allowed, showed me which one I needed to apply for. Okay. Um, Mr. Penzis, just to re remind me on this. So even if we took the residential out of it, like it was all in included in this commercial thing, Auto sales aren't allowed on that corner under the new plan and the South Memphis development stuff. Uh, it wouldn't be allowed for the zoning district. Okay, that's the, okay. All right, any other questions of? And how chairman? long is your current lease? Um, it's we have. I'm thinking we signed the lease. We didn't assign the lease, so um, I don't know how long because it's not a date on there. He's just allowing us to 
continues to be Miss Curry, and she passed away. And now um, her son and her daughter is the one that has taken over. So it's not, um, you know, like twelve or twenty-four months. It, it doesn't state that on there. So you just you just have a per month price of leasing. Yes, sir. Okay. Every so month, month to month. Yes, okay. yes sir. Okay. But it's the same price. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none. Uh, is there anybody else here that wanted to speak on behalf of the applicant? Okay, so we're gonna. So you get two minutes of rebuttal after the opposition, plus you have like eight minutes of reserve time you didn't use. So we're gonna hear from the opposition and then we'll come back. Okay. <coughs> you can just, yeah, just take a seat like you're right there. Okay. All right. So it, I think. See, we have one person from the opposition. I think Mr. Rutledge. Yeah, if you'll come forward, please. And once you get there, give your name and address for the uh, for the record. <coughs> I'm Dennis Rutledge. I'm the assistant director of Calvary Rescue Mission, 960 South Third Street. Uh, we abut the property on two sides, okay. and the street abuts it on the other two. All right. <laughs> Let me swear you in real quick. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes. Sir. All right. Go ahead, sir. Um, we are opposed to this. Uh, the building, as you saw in the pictures, is an eyesore. Uh, we've made a major investment in the in the neighborhood. We've improved our property, investing a little more than $3 million uh, to just build a bu bigger building and help our neighborhood. Um, our building has been an asset to the neighborhood, and this building is set with no activity. Uh, many of the cars that you saw in the picture there have been there for more than a year. I know that they've been there for more than a year because one of them, uh, one of the two that I know have been there for more than a year, had a man who was staying in there for more than a month uh, before we got him to come into the shelter uh, and be there with us. And the car still sits there. Um, all of the cars you saw in the picture, I've taken a picture of uh, every Thursday morning uh, since the last meeting a, a month ago, and nothing has changed. Uh, the property is still exactly the same. It's been that way for more than a year. There's been no activity, no effort to clean up, uh, no business going on there that we can tell. There's no posted business hours. Uh, the only activity that we're aware of is our house manager, who is almost deaf, uh, told me today that there's loud music coming from the building late at night. Uh, we have no idea what's going on there, but it is, uh, it's a detriment to the neighborhood as it stands. We ask you not to approve the, a, a used car lot directly. It's sitting in our front door. Your property kind of surrounds it. Yes, correct? it does. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this. So, so far, they've not legally been able to open that business because they don't mm -hmm. have approval to do so. Would a going business like that make a difference to you as opposed to what's there? Or you're just like, we don't need Not with the conditions that it is now. There, formerly, there was a uh, auto repair shop mm -hmm. uh, in the front there when uh, we were in a much smaller building, which the, we still have that building in the back of our property. Uh, but there's been no activity over there since 2007. Mm -hmm that we've been able to, to identify. Uh, and a used car lot or uh, vehicle repair shop uh, abutting our property, it, it's not, it's zero clearance from the back of that building uh, to our property line. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Are there any other questions? Or? Yeah, go ahead. Question. Um, have you been in communication with Ms. Gates? No, we haven't. Because um, you seem surprised to hear about the music at night. So <laughs> I saw her face when you said mm -hmm. that. So um, maybe, you know, com some communication, you know, would be helpful between the two of you. But also, um, as Mr. Rainey pointed out, they are unable to legally occupy mm -hmm. the building. So um, I just want to ask again, is it the type of business that's the issue? Would... Um, she I wrote down chain. She plans to use a chain link fence. Would kind of a sight proof fence make a difference? Or I I want to understand the nature of the objection more uh, clearly. Our objection is simply the the property is not being used for what it's been approved for in, in the first place. Um, it's an eyesore, and there's been no effort whatsoever to clean it up. The um, but if she cannot interject real quick, oh, if she that, does clean it up, is that does that make a difference? The other thing that I meant to mention, there's been no way to find out who who is controlling the property so that we could contact them. 
and okay. tried to to do anything about it. Okay. Because we would um, we would love to try and make something work there with used car lot and and vehicle repair shop. We don't feel is conducive to that neighborhood. Okay. So just asking again if if she did make the required improvements, it's just the type of business that you have a objection to. Even if she cleaned it up, made it presentable. We would have to see, we would like to see what those improvements would entail. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know if anybody can get you, there's like a, if approved, there's like a laundry list of conditions on it. <laughs> like literally, yeah, 22. We'd like to see what it was gonna look like. Conditions. <laughs> place oh no mm -hmm. okay thank you did you want a copy of the conditions in the site plan we would so like we to see what the here? site plan the overall site plan would be if that you know if you're even considering approving it Mr. Chairman, why don't we have uh, the second speaker give yeah. his testimony, yeah, then we'll come back to Mr. Rutledge. Yeah, if you want to see one of those additions off of my packet. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. All right, sir, if you can give your name and address for the record. My name is Bruce Brook. I'm, I'm the board. I've been an associate with the Calvary Rescue Mission since the mid-70s. Mm -hmm. My address is 254 Court Avenue, Suite 300, Memphis. Mm -hmm. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, stuff beyond? I do. All right, go ahead, Mr. Uh, the thought that this property is 2,500 square feet, approximately, apparently, that it'd be a used car lot. 12,000. 12,000 yeah. square feet. I don't think there's enough room there, as you can see from the photographs in the plan, to fit more than like three or four cars. Um, and then they're talking about a building. If you look at the photographs of the Calvary Rescue Mission, the three plus million dollars that's been put into that facility in the last uh, two years, you know, we've increased the size of the number of men, the clients that we can hold from 36 or so to 108. And uh, we believe that uh, it, the property, it, it just doesn't, it's not conducive to anything that uh, is in that neighborhood right now as to our property. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have uh, folks from many churches and that, other groups come down every night usually to help serve and uh, facilitate. We have training going on for the men. Um, and we think that aesthetically, as you can see, the, the building, now we have uh, music, uh, hymns playing at night. <laughs> Uh, in the neighborhood, uh, we have the, the crosses illuminating the neighborhood, and it has uh, historically been, in the last seven years, thought to be one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the United States. And we've seen a transition since uh, the improvement uh, with the crosses and that, and the, uh, the quality of the, the operation. Um, and this business has not. I mean, it's not just in the last year or so. It's we had several men work there over the years, and the last one was like 2007. There's been absolutely no activity there, and as the young lady has said, it's a uh, apparently a month-to-month -month lease, but it, it, it's not operational. We, we submit that you know no posted business hours of any kind, no activity of any kind, and that in fact. The rescue mission would, we own everything going back to the far street. Um, it's a lot of property and we only are short one house and we'd prefer to you know, acquire probably this property to make it cosmetically beautiful in the neighborhood as well as potentially put a, a women's shelter in the back of our property way in the other street behind us. So uh, we have plans to try to do as much as we can for the community and we just don't think it's accommodating for our per use. Right, okay. So I think, oh, hold on, we get, might have some questions. So the, I guess what, what the board is saying, and we're not saying what we're going to vote on or anything like that, is she's not 
I'll ask her to be sure. I don't think she's leased it since 2007. She's recently leased it. So all the stuff that's been happening doesn't necessarily have to do with what she's doing. So the real question here is a used car lot, is that a problem? <laughs> you know what I mean? As opposed to, well, this car's been sitting there for years. Well, I don't, I don't, I'm going to find out, but I don't think those are her cars. That's just right. prior tenants. So, that, so I think the question for us is used car lot, not what it was. I would say that a used car lot in the adjacent area of that location mm -hmm. geographically is not a good fit. Okay. Uh, to our south is a building the city of Memphis has. It was one of the like second or third Holiday Inns. Okay. Um, and that, you know, is kept clean and it looks great. And uh, we were able to accommodate their use. But we, our used car lot, I don't think, is appropriate for that corner. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you for that. Any, wait, any other questions for Mr. Brooks? I don't think so. But okay. Have you reviewed the conditions or looked at the site plan? I have. Okay. Just want to. Y'all seem to be sitting together, so I was just making sure. I do have a question, Miss. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. Not want to walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to keep you from walking back and forth. Now, do you have the same objections? I'm looking at one, two, three. Looks like uh, car lots uh, adjacent across the street from you. Uh, as well, do you have those same sentiments to those car lots? Or are they fixed up or, or those kept are, to your approval? Those are maintained. They've been there forever. They've been a very good neighbor. Mm -hmm. and in fact, that gentleman said if he ever owned that little quadrant of the land we're talking about there, he'd, be, he'd give it, donate it to the mission. Oh, so, okay. Uh, but he's kept a very neat uh, operation and very... Uh, uh, supportive of everything that's happened in the mission. He's been a contributor in that type of thing. Okay. Uh, so there's but, uh, but it's, as you can see, it's not attached to uh, adjacent, immediately adjacent to our building. In fact, our building sort of hidden a little bit um, from the public. Um, and some guys have trouble finding us anyway. <laughs> but for now, we have the, the illuminated uh, crosses. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anybody else here that came to speak in opposition? All right. Seeing none, we're going to move back to the applicant. Who do has we, some Mr. Chairman, do we want to hear back from Mr. Rutledge on? Oh, Mr. Rutledge, did you want to say anything? No, sir. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. All right. Ms. Scaife, if you'll come forward, and I think we had. She has 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Yeah, that's right. 10 minutes. If you need 10 minutes. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Well, as far as the loud music, we don't even operate the build, the building right now. Um, so it's definitely not us. Um, when we pull up, it is cars on that lot, and they come in from the, I guess they park on the front and walk toward the mission. I'm not sure how that goes. But um, for the month of December, we have um, torn bushes down. Um, we have cleaned out the air, I mean, cleaned out the area or whatever. Well, um, went in, we're actually in the process now of getting the parking lot repaved, um, but it has been, we have been making changes for the month of, I wish I would have took, had taken pictures and I didn't, I actually forgot, um, that it's actually a big change as far as the appearance, as far as the, um, the uh, landscaping. Um, but we do ask, you know, we do have car lot in front of us, a car lot on the corner, even though they're in the process of getting their business taken care of. They have been there for years. Um, the business is, um, our business is big enough in order to hold the amount of cars that they, the state, I mean, the, that they will allow um, us to hold. Um, again, I um, say that if you guys allow us the time to make improvement, um, what you're asking um, of us, we will definitely um, do that um, as far as, um, Um, I mean, I, I'm really nervous. This is my first time speaking oh, in front of you guys. guys. <laughs> um, but I mean, I never even seen them if they, you know, if we, we were there. It was a lot of us. It was my nephew. It was a whole lot of us actually cleaning up the site. So, you know, they were able to come out. Me, myself, as well, was out there. So um, they could have um, come out and introduced themselves to me or whatever. 
but um, again, as far as the loud music, we don't even have, we're just now trying to get everything going. Um, the cars that is on the lot, um, those cars are being, they were, um, they're being repaired and they also are being removed. The owners are, will, will be um, removing those cars. Actually, two of them have already um, been removed um, off the lot. Um, Ma'am, maybe. Oh no! Oh, I oh, was scratching, but uh, that was yes, my question. Uh, what happens to the existing? Yeah, cars? they're they're actually being removed now, um, and they were towed away. So I mean, again, if you guys allow us a chance to be able to come back, I say in five business, I mean five years, five ten, you will see the difference. But as far as whatever you guys require, we're definitely willing to. Um, Make sure we satisfy whatever you're asking. Did you read all the conditions? I did. Okay, just I, I sure. did. Um, I have a. Yeah, question. go ahead, Miss Paul. Um, I think there was a two-year sunset on that, and usually we do a two-year. That's fine. Um, and you come back as far as and we review. Yes, ma'am. And ma the second question: um, How long before the cleanup is done and the space is operable? As soon as we be approved and we get everything, um, we have to get everything lined up with the O, I mean, the um, UNO in order so we can be able to operate it. Um, we'll be operable. Um, and so then we submit, I mean, as far as us op opening it up, we're not waiting on the dealer license to be approved yet because we will still be opening everything up um, to service cars as well. Okay. So you'll be initially servicing cars. And then once you get your dealer yes, license, you'll be selling cars. Yes, ma'am. So between, uh, what is estimated time of I would maybe say, six um, months? Yes, so? exactly. Six months? It, because it's going to take, well, we'll be opening up before the six months, you okay. know, once we um, get everything in place in order to be okay. able to open up business legally. Um, that's what, that's our plan. And, and do you have plans to alter the building yes, itself, the physical space yeah. itself? Like as far as painting and tell me, yeah, yes, painting yes, and whatever yes. other. We're in the process now. I mean, if I really hate I didn't take the pictures because the. Can we pull it up on Google Maps? Is it? Oh, no, not no. the inside. Yeah, no, not the, the inside. The outside. The outside um, actually has. We had. It was weeds even on that property for the Calvary area. I think it's fenced off, but we removed all of that debris. Um, though that has been, we have already been um, getting it going. Would you be open to a site proof fence? Do what now? A site proof fence Can versus a chain link. Um, the chain link is well, but the site proof a is more fence. like a wood, a wood fence. You can't see through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, if, yeah. It, if that's the, if that's the requirement, then that we don't have a problem with that. But I'm. Once we get everything going, and trust me, it will it will definitely be eye catching. Um, we've been on the pyramid and both sides for um, years, and we have been we um, dealing with them as far as doing some of their automotive work. When so we don't have a problem. I, I don't know. I, I'm sorry that they even had that problem because well, we don't know anything about loud music. Well, uh, I mean, right now music. you're not responsible. For, right. Because you're not physically uh, yes. operating, you know, yes. there, and yes. it's not operable. So yes, that's not really, uh, that's yes, the owners. Right, right, right. I got a, I got a couple questions. Yes, yes. So as far as being a service center, um, I'm trying to just figure out, I'm looking at the, the plan, how many cars would y'all have for sale versus um, what y'all would have for servicing? Are you trying to keep those service cars overnight? Well, Is that just no. daily service? Hey, we won't be able to service them. The only we only have space for we have a lift in the inside, so we only have space to keep cars overnight. If we had to, um, would be uh, three. Okay, that makes so, sense. So yes, and they would yeah. be inside. Yes, okay. That, okay. those will be the inside. The rest of the cars is around in the fence area. That will be the display mm -hmm. um, lot for us. And that's about eighteen of oh, what, about eighteen um, bays. Probably yes, because the state say the minimum twenty five, but we can't we can't hold twenty five. They just um, saying that with that area because they, they don't know the area. Um, so so we the, won't you're saying the state to, said you could have had up to 25, up to and 20, you're saying we could have We can't even, yeah, 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 we can't hold that many uh, okay. anyway. So um, we definitely have ample enough room as far as to be able to um, 
store cars that's for sale. Does this does the state have a minimum number of cars you have to keep to be a dealer? Um, it depends on the size of your sure. the area. Yeah. I can't remember what it is. I ain't got it. It depends yeah. on the size. Um, We're above the minimum then. And we're you would have enough room. I would for have enough minimum. room. Yes, sir. Okay, that's yes, okay. That's yes, that's really where yes, I was going with that. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. And so you have reviewed. I'm sorry. No, you're I'm sorry. Uh, you have reviewed all of the conditions. Are there any questions or objections to the conditions as presented by staff? No. Um. I, when I spoke with Jeffrey, he said if you know they if you guys did decide to approve it, then it will be a listing. But I have went through the ones that's on there now. I have. Um, and I don't have a problem with um, getting everything met up to code. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, are there any other questions of staff before we move on to discussion? Probably not. Okay. So with that, could we get a motion to approve BOA 19-114 as conditioned by staff? So moved. Any discussion? Can we add the site precinct? Uh, it's already a site proof on the mm -hmm. eastern side of the property. Oh, it is? Yeah, it is. Yeah, That's mm -hmm. in number, uh, number nine, I think. Oh, did we get a second on that? Thank you. Uh, second. Okay, all right. Go ahead. So you're asking, about, it's number 12. Which one? Mm -hmm. um, site proof. Down. East side shall be site proof, treated oh, gotcha. cedar. Okay. Okay. Feet until okay. Fine. Any other questions, comments? Now, they, I, I understand that there should be no outdoor speaker system or similar system. Um, I get that. But then I hear testimony that they're playing hymnals in the air, so there is a speaker in the neighborhood. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. I'm just, I was just hearing that, and I saw that. So, I guess we want to keep continuity. I think maybe yes, I think maybe it should be. I mean, during business hours only, or permitted, or right, I don't right, want right, to be. Right. They seem okay with not having an outdoor speaker system, so I'd really, I would just leave it without an outdoor speaker system. I'm going to leave it without it. <laughs> yeah, last time you had an outdoor speaker system, it was like Chuck Hutton Chevrolet, the massive sign. Yeah, that's true. You'd probably spring from one side yeah, to the other. Yeah, you're like, so-and-so had a call, right. and they're, they're putting out right. that couple yeah. things. So I don't think they need anything like that there anyway. Um, I'm still conflicted. I'm still trying to decide <laughs> what I want to do on this one. Uh, uh, Mr. Baker? Chairman, yes. yes. Um, I... I'm going to vote against this, and I'll tell you uh, some of the reasons. The, the one is I, I am not sure that the applicant herself, and I really admire her coming back with this new plan that has, you know, added all the landscaping and everything, and and I really do appreciate it, but I just don't think that she really understands uh, closing a curb cut, uh, rebuilding all the sidewalks, putting all this landscaping in. I mean, it is just an enormous investment uh, in this site that, that she would have to make uh, just to, to have this business. And uh, <clears throat> the staff, uh, in their comments, before the area was taken out for the landscaping, they mentioned that the parking area where the cars would be didn't meet the standards in the ordinance. So now it would be even smaller. And if you just really look at this, uh, this is uh, on page eight of the uh, staff report, you can see you know, how, how small the lot really is. That's my first uh, group of uh, reasons. Uh, the other one is, uh, and we had a discussion about this uh, in our uh, briefing meeting, but um, this plan, this area is covered by the South Memphis plan, and uh, after the South Memphis plan was adopted, there was a down zoning, and the down zoning uh, was uh, from a district that would have permitted this. 
to a district that doesn't permit it. And uh, so now, it, to me, if we just approve that use, it would be like overturning uh, that comprehensive rezoning. And then uh, point out also that the 3.0 plan recently adopted, uh, it by, this use is, violates that plan. And so um, for all those reasons, I, I can't vote for this. Um, for this application, although I really respect what you've done, and I, I, I feel like you're going to find the right site uh, for you to be a success. I just don't think this is it. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, thank you, Ms. <laughs> Baker. Uh, other thoughts or comments? I don't know. I'm, I'm totally uh, um, probably in opposition of uh, uh, my board member here. Uh, I think based on as presented and, and as the applicant has put forth effort to um, revitalize this corner, yes, it's not permitted, um, but I think the steps that she has presented to take, um, it is a small spot, it is among other um, car lots, but she has um, presented to us and, ha and is willing to work with staff to make it a acceptable um, lot. Uh, and I think the state and her being able to come back in two years for us to monitor it uh, would help us further if she's really serious about this uh, property. So um, with that being said, you know, I'm for giving her a shot. I think it's, it'll be in a better position than it is now sitting there. Uh, and I don't think anyone's going to invest that much into a property for it to fail. So I'm going to vote for the pot. And if I could, I'm in agreement with Ms. Savage Towns. Um, I think Ms. Gay deserves the opportunity to be a good neighbor, one. Um, but also, there's a lot of people, respectfully, there's a lot of people that come in here that really don't understand <laughs> how big the undertaking is. And they figure it out. And I, I feel like she can figure it out as well. Um, because, I mean, everybody, to some degree, has to figure it out. There are things that just are unforeseen. The budget swells. Just, you know, FYI. Um, <laughs> but, and it happens. So, I'm, but I am in agreement. I, I do understand also that um, what the parameters of the 3.0 plan are and so on and so on. But, again, um, this is, we have a huge problem with blight. And if you're going to make the investment and take the steps to turn this property around, then I feel like this is a good time to make an exception. Um, I've got a question. I can't really be necessarily answered here, but it's a thought question. Um, there have been citations for the other car dealership just along the same street they didn't go through the protocol that this lady has gone through with the investment. However, that will at some point need to be dealt with, not by our board, because they're not in front of us through environmental court. Um, are we setting up a precedent that, does that go into play to determine if they can continue their businesses and they didn't go through the proper protocols that the neighbor down the street. Cases will come to us. Uh, yeah. They're in environmental court. Well, yeah. So, um, so but it doesn't automatically legitimize. Those. Right. It doesn't. They still have to go through the process. Right. Um, so it's it's just now, and because it, it may eventually get back to us now, we've got the the plan that's in area in one area, and and then we're gonna go back and I guess revert the plan piecemeal as we see the cases come before us. And that was just the only pick that got in my mind. Like, are we going to piecemeal put together a plan based on how someone goes through the process? Or is there a plan in place and we go by the guideline and, and, and follow with the well-researched costly plan that was put in place. Yeah. 
Um, I, 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 I tend to agree with Miss Baker on this. Um, I appreciate the applicants, all the work that's been done to put together a really, you know, a good plan for a spot. I hate to go against <coughs> the South Memphis planning that has basically said this isn't a use we want to facilitate or to uh, have go on here. We have the other people that are going to maybe come before us or not. I just think it's uh, just opposed to what the Memphis 3.0 and the South Memphis plan. And, and I think it's a lot of work for the little spot. So whether, I know that's on the applicant, but I feel bad to go so far and I just don't see it going well. But, and I don't really see a reason to vote for it in accordance with 9.226. So any other comments? Uh, with that, I assume you're ready to vote. Uh, Mr. Whitehead, will you give us a roll call vote? Ms. Scurlock? No. Vice Chair Savage Downs? Yes. Mr. Malazari? No. Mr. Ms. Doss? Yes. Mr. Claybrook? Yes. Ms. Baker? No. And Mr. Chairman? No. Three ayes, four nays. All right, the motion fails. Thank you all for coming down today. Good, best of luck to you, Ms. Gay. Hopefully, that month-to-month -month lease, you should be able to get out of it or form a different plan that's available under the code. Uh, Mr. Whitehead, will you call the next case for us? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. That brings us to agenda item number six, which is BOA 19-132, located at 235 West Shelby Drive. The applicant is Mars Hill Baptist Church, represented by Niraj Kumar. The use district is the R6 single family district, and the request is a variance to permit an encroachment of an existing church building into the rear yard setback, as well as to permit off site parking and to permit a variance from a class two buffer along the adjacent residential properties. Okay, is the applicant present? All right, very good. Is there any opposition present? Okay, perfect. Yes. If the applicant would go ahead and come sit on the front row, just make it a little easier, and we'll hear a staff report. Real quick. Thank you, sir. Okay, Mr. Skinner, whenever you're ready. Yes. Take your time. Apologies for Nimmers. Um, I'm Lucas Skinner with the Office of Planning and Development. This is BOA 19-132. Um, essentially a few variances um, to allow a small church um, located at 235 West Shelby Drive. This was held from last month's December 18th uh, meeting. Um, I, there was a small uh, sort of lack of communication kind of between myself and the representative. Um, Mars Hill was actually the old owner, the new owner's Cathedral of Praise. I just wanted to throw that out really quickly. Um, but essentially this request, um, there are three variances um, to permit um, encroachment into the rear setback, uh, to prevent off-site parking, and then a variance um, uh, from a class two buffer along residential lines. Um, and this is in an R6 district. Uh, here's the location maps in the kind of the southwest corner of the city. Um, vicinity map, there were 48 notices mailed uh, back in early December and there were three letters of opposition that are attached to the staff report. Here's an aerial view. The top um, bigger yellow box is the um, existing shell, if you will, of the church and then the bottom yellow marker is the proposed site for parking. Here's the zoning map. Um, again, existing zoning is R6. Um, it's primarily residential on um, all sides. Um, again, noted on the land use map. Um, there's a series of an alley um, way where a, and a drive was supposed to kind of cut through with those parcels to the south. Um, engineering has noted that that will never be actualized and we don't plan on doing anything. Um, so again, just the residential kind of on both the western and eastern side of the property. Um, here's a few site <coughs> photos. Um, both 
looking sort of south and southeast at the property, you can see there is um, a fairly steep hill um, that kind of peaks right at this church's front yard um, in comparison to the two side um, residential properties. Again, here's another aerial reference um, closer just to show you what's going on. Again, that southern parcel is um, the new proposed um, site for parking. Um, here is the survey. Um, we had reworked, um, what I was showing just a second, the site plan um, that cuts out the um, driveway kind of cut there um, on the sort of northwestern side of the property. Um, so we reworked it to be on the eastern side as shown in this new site plan, um, which will cut through to the um, that parcel behind, um, again, cutting over that 10 foot alley that's behind the property. Um, Staff found that setbacks in the offsite parking aren't really handled with Memphis 3.0, so we didn't feel that Memphis 3.0 really applied to this. Um, into the conclusions, again, um, three variances for um, rear setback encroachment uh, to permit offsite parking for the church, and then um, a variance for the class two buffer that's required on the residential lines. Um, the survey um, said that uh, sort of claimed the church is 4.4 feet from the rear property line, so the church is um, therefore encroaching 15.6 feet into the rear setback because our six district calls for a 20 foot setback. Um, the applicant is uh, seeking offsite parking to the south. Um, again, a 10 foot alley separates um, the existing church parcel from the parking. Um, staff found that after reworking the site plan over the past month that this could be an ideal location for parking considering everything that's going on with the lot. Um, lastly, the UDT does call for a class two buffer for churches along any residential lines, so western and eastern sides of the property. Um, due to the topographical sort of confinements of the lot as well as the size and as well as the existing shell of the property that's already there, staff found that a full class two buffer would probably not fit, especially on the eastern side of the lot with the way that the site plan was reworked. Um, so we've also added a uh, variance for that. Um, staff found that um, a six foot site, uh, site proof fence would um, hopefully provide enough privacy and security, um, at least for the um, neighbors to the west and east. Um, the existing structure has remained vacant for quite a few years. Um, staff finds their current proposal and site could be usable in order to finish this building. Um, and then the granting of this variance, um, staff finds will not cause substantial detriment to the public good or sub substantially impair the intent and purpose um, of the code, nor will it be injurious um, and should be in harmony with the purpose of the intent for the code. Staff recommends approval with conditions, um, and I've listed five conditions there, which are also in the staff report, and I'm available for any questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Skinner? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Hey, go ahead. Uh, you, you said that this alley is not paved. It's just a correct on paper. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. An alley, right? So, according to the regulations, if if that alley were closed, then at least two of these variations would go away, wouldn't, wouldn't they? Because it'd be all one piece of property, and the church could have their parking on it. Correct. I believe personally that um, with the opposition that's present and they can certainly speak on their behalf would probably not sign off on that on a full alley closure happening um, so I I thought this might be a better route for the applicant to, um, to have this work okay I, I have one uh, other question absolutely uh, I don't remember uh, what is the difference between a class two and a class three buffer um, mainly the, so, okay, the class two, there's not a whole lot. Um, it was really, it's really just kind of sometimes a, between a fence and like bushes and then like a fence and trees. Um, so I was, in reference to all of this, I was trying to keep some privacy along, of course, the residential lines on their behalf. Um, I was also trying to keep the parking. I wanted to keep the buffer at least for the parking so that that, so cars would have the um, least view from their neighbors. So so um, the class three buffer that you're calling for around the parking area mm -hmm. is not less of a buffer than class two. Is that what you're telling me? Correct, yes, yeah, not necessarily, okay. yeah, it's not really. Okay. Um, it's just the UDC calls for that for the offsite okay. parking. All right, my, that's all my questions, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's tough to tell just with the uh, 
the way the maps are. Yeah. There is a, because there's so much green, is there a street to the south of the parking, or is that just a paper street? Yeah, it was, there is, like, supposed, okay, okay yeah, okay, there is, it's um, difficult, um, can you see, is it, are you talking sort of the one that's I'm more like, all cut? I can see is trees, so I'm just trying to tell if there's pavement directly to the south of the lower blue box. There is pavement. Okay. So yeah, I guess there is. Yes. Okay. I apologize. I don't didn't quite know, but Hold on. We're, yeah. We're we can't speak Sorry. from the floor. Uh, we can, but we'll talk, Phil. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, Chair. Yeah. Sure. I yeah. I'm not quite sure. Mr. Chairman, if I may, this uh this this subdivision is one of the reasons why the state of Tennessee adopted it, a platting statute. Back in the day, a developer would lay out a subdivision with lots. Mr. Chairman, I'm talking to you. I can hear everything you said. Well, we have platting statutes from the early 20th century because developers would lay out a subdivision, build only some, but not all, roads, and then sell lots that had no access to anything except for woods. Um, and I think this is probably the largest example of that in Shelby County. When it was developed, it was uh, probably part of the Lakeview community, mm -hmm. um, and this was an early subdivision that predated the platting statute. So you have a lot of paper streets. So yeah, there's a paper street there, but that's it's essentially landlocked. Yes. Yeah, because Charter is a full lot south of that. It's, yeah. it's further, so it's not even on the screen right now. Okay. Yes, sir. And there's but, also a street to the east as well. Sure, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Skinner? All right, if the applicant would like to come up and get sworn in, we'll give your name and address for the record, sir. Skinny Jones, 5188 Sunny Auto, Memphis, Tennessee, 31225. All right. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, stuff we got? All right, go ahead. Would you like to add anything to Mr. Skinner's uh, presentation? Uh, he didn't show that we also own uh, this, um, the lot that's adjacent to the blue and where, that, where the cursory is. Yeah, we also own that, which we intend to utilize to, off of that street, Chisholm, the East Street, mm -hmm. to utilize as parking as well. Okay. What about the one directly... You can, no, I'll just the, this one. That one. That's I, owned by uh, Christina okay. Kemp. Mm. Okay. Wait, so you own 04 or 05? 02. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So okay. Okay. Yeah, right there. Okay. Okay. Right, any other any other comments? Okay, then you can just reserve your time for rebuttal, <laughs> which will be a. <laughs> 11 minutes or so. <laughs> All right, uh, is there anybody else here that needs to speak in support of this request? If not, we're going to move to the opposition. So I have some cards here so y'all can come up. To, I can call people or y'all can tell me who wants to talk. Oh, we have one support. Oh, in support? Okay, go ahead. Well, sorry about that. Or just give your name and address for the record. I'm Coretta Jones, and I live at 5188 Sunny Auto, Memphis, Tennessee, 38125. Okay, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and about the truth, stuff you got? All the things. Okay, thank you. When you purchased this property, you did look to make sure that they that they actually had a permit to do the part that they did, because we was curious as to why they didn't complete it, and we found out that it was a financial uh, situation with that. And as uh, Mr. Jones stated, we are looking at uh, both of those lots to be able to come in so that they can come in from a street and not coming in in front of the church uh, as well. Um, and we just want this to be done because we, we've grown and we needed a bigger location. So that was the perfect location. And the pastor that uh, used to have that church that died, this was part of his vision. So we did want to make sure that we completed the vision that he had. Okay. Any questions for Mrs. Jones? Thank you, ma'am. All right. Anybody else want to speak in support before we move? Okay, it, we'll move on to the opposition. So I have a couple of Kemp's, a Spain. <laughs> Whoever wants to come down is fine. Yeah. Okay, you'll give your name and address for the record for me. All right, Christina Kemp. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, Two forty-three West Shelby Drive, uh, residence to the west okay. on the church. 
you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, Kofi guy? I do. Okay, go ahead. All right, hello, everybody. Um, I'm in high opposition of this barrier's request uh, due to just the fact that the applicant's request to get this church put here will put many hearts, multiply our hardships that we already face with another church. If you zoom out, there's another church three, literally 300 feet to the east of that church. Um, <clears throat> Shelby Drive is already, this is the other church here if you want to be topped or not. Um, Shelby Drive is already a very, very uh, heavy traffic area. And right now, you know, with the church there, they put a new gas station there. We've seen increases of traffic. Uh, as of right now, we already face hardship with the church with limited parking. They'll have cars parked down the street. Also, uh, spilling into the uh, school, which is Judah Middle School there. So we've already seen the fact, you know, and proven that having a church with limited parking would not be feasible for us as residents on that street. Um, the applicants, from what I can see from the tax assessor's website, already own a church on Third Street, which is five minutes down the street, if that width area and room to expand parking if needed. Um, it, to me, are the applicants about to turn this into a rental church, and now we're going to have just all kinds of people in and out of the church, because if you're getting a church and you have a current church where you can expand, why move to a constricted residential lot wedged in between, in between two residential houses? The applicant just spoke and said that they plan to use that back lot uh, as a second parking lot or spillover parking. I don't see how that's possible when, if you look at the site and according to the codes, uh, I own that back lot. And on that proposed street in between those two lots, I have 25 feet, they have 25 feet. How are they going to have an entryway without encroaching onto my property? Um, right now, we're in the works of getting a, um, a land. Uh, escape guy come out and clear that property out and I'm going to fence the whole lot in back there. Uh, my family is highly invested in this area here from that 25 feet coming off of the church all the way down um, to I think about six, seven lots down Shelby Drive and all the way to the back fence. We all own that. That's family property. So we are highly invested in what's going to take place over here next to our home and what we're invested in. Um, <clears throat> at this point, to me, you know, bypassing most, multiple UDC codes just to allow this church to get here because they purchased the church and now they want to seek relief uh, on their efforts when, to me, if I'm a purchasing a quote-unquote commercial place of worship before I sign that dotted line, I'm getting a survey, I'm getting building inspections and everything. This was not just a tax sale uh, that they went to the land bank or something and bought real quick um, or auction. Um, <clears throat> at this point, can they guarantee that there's only going to be the site, the site plan now shows 26 parking spaces. Can they guarantee that from here at 25 years down the line that they're only going to do 25 cars at the church? What about funerals? What about special services? What, I mean, if you have a church, you're going to have pastor and wife anniversary. You're going to have funerals. You're going to have whatever events that you want to have at the church. And that possibly can spill over into us. There's a fire hydrant there. What about the safety issues? What about the residents who's already facing issues coming in and out of their resident, residential properties? So also, um, we've already had, you know, not a run-in, but a situation where when they first came to the property, if you see that uh, slight driveway, that's our property. They we're utilizing that driveway. My dad told them, hey, this is our property. Y'all can't use this. Still kept coming. Still kept coming. Hey, this is our property. I went out to the applicants and told them, hey, this is our property. We need you to move. Had cars all up the hill. Um, but I was told, oh, so uh, us using this little piece of driveway, is that bothering you? Well, we pay the taxes. This is our property. We own it. At that point, because... And after that, even still, while I'll be at work, my mom will call me, hey, they're still up the property. She's had to run them off while I was at work. <clears throat> and with that, we had to go and actually put up stakes and put a chain 
literally across our driveway to keep them off the lot. And even with that, there was still one person that came and parked up on our driveway. So at that point, we're already impacted and they not even actively in the church yet. And we've seen what a church this close to the residents' homes with limited parking can bring. So I just ask, you know, that there are other concerns of our well-being to be take, taken into consideration. I understand, you know, you make a purchase. Sometimes you got to deal with what comes behind it, but if them purchased in that church, it could have been avoided because something would have asked, hey, why has this been sitting here for as long as it has? Why has nobody purchased it? You know, this is a constricted lot. What's going on with it? Those are questions that I would have asked before I purchased it. And the city right now doesn't even recognize it as a building. It's literally coded as a vacant lot. So. When did they start construction on that build? Not the predecessor, of course. Oh. You know. Come on, you said the. When the church, when the, did they start when building it that? Actually, initially got built? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Not what they've done. Just how long has that building maybe been there? But you need to answer. Don't. Oh. It's we can have ten, we can talk to you when you come I say ten up. plus yeah. years. Okay. Um, and where is the? I was trying to find the other church on Google Maps. Is this Jeter or the church? You have uh, that's Jeter across the street, and then that other building that's got like the white roof. Mm -hmm. That's the other church. The white roof with yeah, the right below where right, it says right below right across from Jeter. It's called New Highway Church of God. Okay. I mean, it looks different on Google. I don't know what yeah. it's about, too. <laughs> <laughs> so the white roof with the thing like the airport? Correct. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the other church? Okay. And Jeter's across the street. All right. Uh, other questions for Ms. Kemp? All right. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Come on down. we got about four minutes. I'm Debbie Kim. Debbie I did a 243 as well. Okay. Um, let, me, let me swear you in real quick. Oh. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, God? I do. Okay. Thank okay. you much. Uh, my husband and I, um, uh, my, my husband's family and I, we own the 10 lots around the 235. The, like I said, she owned the one on the west, and then the, the ones on the south, and then they own the ones on the west. So we decided, you know, instead of going out to Fayette County and building a house, we built our home there in 2004. And so, like I said, when we moved over there, the structure was pretty much all but abandoned. Okay. And my thing is that the, the codes and things that they're going through, that's, that are going through right now, they were obviously there from the first day that the building was started, unless. And so I'm like, how did the building actually get built? because the, the the things that we're discussing right now were there from day one and so it's like they were coming over there and trying to force this oversized building on this lot and they put it there but i don't know how it got there but when they came up and wanted to do something to it then now we're here discussing the whole thing when i'm still confused as to how it even got built and so like what i'm saying even when we put our house up uh, it, it's, to me, it's almost like the code enforcement wasn't involved with the bill at all. Okay? So it's like when we put our house up, code enforcement, all, they were always there. They was there to make sure that we followed the code, to make sure that we uh, wasn't doing anything that was against the law, which they were looking out for us because we were owner builders and they was protecting us from being from the other, uh, from the contractors and, and whatever. But then, you know, I felt like they was being hard on us, but I come to understand why they were there. They were trying to protect us from being messed over by people. But still, here we are now again with the same violations that has been sitting there on that building all that time. And I'm just trying to understand that even, like I said, this church is still being forced on us even now. And it's just being stuck down our throat and make we're being made to deal with this church being just caved in on us. Like I said, the traffic is bad down there and everything. And so, like I said, they, even with, when they put that uh, high, that 69 bypass down there, that increased the traffic. And like this, like my daughter said, 
dealing with the other church. You still got all this parking on the street. I have to come home sometime and people sitting in my driveway. I got to sit there in, in the middle of Shelby Drive looking at them come out of my driveway in order for me to come in when it's not necessary. And so for them just coming over there to me, it's just going to put more detriment on us. And like she said before, they have parking down the street, down the street at the other church down there. And I don't know what they really intend to do with the building. That's another concern of mine. I don't know what they intend to do over there, whether they're going to use it for uh, uh, for to rent the church out to other people. I just don't know. And to have them over there, and especially on the other neighbors over there, you see that house right there on the east side. That house, that church, the line is right down beside those people, that, beside their house. And the driveway is basically going to be in their bedroom. And the driveway is only big enough for one car to go in and one car to come out. It's not, that driveway is not conducive. Even if you put the sound barriers out there, that driveway would not be big enough to even put a line down through there to have a two-way driveway. Everything is gonna be coming in. One car come in, one car come out. One car come in, one car come out. And I don't think we should, we should have to be subjected to this in our quiet little neighborhood that we trying to maintain our peace and quiet that we we pay taxes over there and to me it's just i just don't understand it i just don't understand it and i and i just you know i just i just don't want to see it over there putting this added stress and strain on our neighborhood and that's what i have okay. are there any questions for miss kemp seeing none thank you very much all right and we have you, got, you have all of two seconds. Two seconds. <laughs> oh, man. So you might want to say, I agree, or something like that. That's all you're going to get time for. Go ahead and get your name and address for the record. so we can. My name it. is Eileen Spain. I live at 223 West Okay. Okay. I said, uh, but hold on. You swear okay, to tell the I truth? I swear to tell everything I got to say is the truth. Okay. Okay. I don't know if you received the letters or the pictures that I had sent to Mr. Skinner showing pictures of the driveway, and um, he had informed me that it was going to be double driveway. And uh, like my neighbor said, that's not possible. I have it on my iPad. I put pictures. It's, it's not feasible. Okay. That's the main thing. It's not feasible for right. a two lane. It says 20 mm -hmm. feet. Um, I even show we're a 10 feet driveway. Okay. Well, we'll barely get there. We're out of time. Oh, man. We appreciate you. Mm -hmm. And we got your comment in about the driveway. So I appreciate okay. Do you, do you have, did you show them out there? The, these pictures here? <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we have them. Okay. Well, that, that's my case. Are there any Are there any questions for Miss Spain? Seeing none, thank you for coming down. Okay. All right. If the applicant would like to come back, we have eleven minutes to rebut. So, if you want to go through some of their issues. Uh, first of all, COP Cathedral play, Praise plan to occupy the church. The church was built in two thousand two, which means the church was existing there before they even moved there. New Highway Church of God in Christ was built in 1987, which means that church was there before they built there. They built their house. Um, they don't have any additional parking, so their issues is not our issues because we do have area where we're looking at for additional parking, so it should not pose the same threat. Fifth of the congregation utilized church van, which means that, that that takes away from a lot of cars, so we can still accommodate that. Uh, when we first uh, started looking at the church, we had several conversation with Mr. Kemp not one time did he ever express that I wish the church was not there. So we knew nothing about them not being in agreement with that. Uh, we spoke with Ms. Kemp and she advised us that that was her driveway, did not want us to uh, utilize that driveway. We had uh, additional gravel put so that we'll be able to drive up on the other side so that we would not inconvenience her or cause any problem to her. The church was for sale. So anybody that came over to look at the church outside of our knowing, we, have, we don't have any control of that because the sign had recently came down. So they did not know that the church had been sold. Uh, on Shelby Drive, that's a busy street. You have traffic going up and down. So the noise level is the noise level. Us providing a fence up, trying to uh, keep some of the noise down. We're, we're trying to do anything that we can do because that, that's their home. And we come in peace and we walk in love, not to cause any problems with them. Okay. How many services do y'all have a week? What's y'all's your, your um, church schedule? We have Sunday morning service starts at 9 a.m. Uh, prayer, 9.30 Sunday school, uh, 11 o'clock service. So we're usually out around 2 o'clock. And then on Thursday night, we have Bible study. So if you have a special service, it, 
maybe once every three months, something like that. So usually two services a, a week. Um, how many people typically go? Like, or how many attend each week? Uh, on county, Sunday, Sunday service, no, no, on Sunday everybody service, everybody goes on Easter, right, so and Mother's Day, and Christmas. <laughs> but on Sunday service, you have probably have about sixty-five to seventy people that attend. Right. On Thursday night, you may have thirty people that attend. And then, and how big is the sanctuary? How many people could you get in there? You think? Probably about yeah, three fifty. Oh wow! And you did did state that one fifth of them are on van service. Yes, ma'am. They don't have transportation. What are the van service? What are the vans? How many vans do you have? We have one. One. And it's parked on the premises now. Yes, ma'am. It's not, it's not parked on the premises. We keep it in uh, oh, yeah. where, the, where the person that mm -hmm. drive it. Yeah, it. where they live. They keep it at their house. In, in the driveway, and it's just hard for me to read. Um, it's, is it 20 feet wide, 20.8? 20 I, I don't know. Whatever it is. 16. 16. 16. 16. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's to the church. Okay. That's, mm -hmm. that's yeah. line to line. That's the open space. And how wide is a typical, uh, how wide are the parking spaces? What's a typical parking space? These are shown to be nine feet. Okay. Wide. And a typical driveway is 10 feet, right? Yes. Like a residential. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you do not, in fact, have room for ingress, egress right. at all. Um, so about 12 or 15 people take the van, I'm mm. roughly. That leaves, how many parking, well, 26, many parking they have? 26 they allotted on that. On this back, on this back line, but in that's the, not including the additional one. Okay, and then an additional one, tell me again how many places that would be? It'll probably be the same amount. So you would have just enough to cover your the remainder of the congregation that drives. Well, uh, then you have to take into consideration some of the people that drive their families. So you still got four uh, or five people in uh, one car. And the entry, there is an entrance on the back side as well mm -hmm. versus on Shelby Drive. Yeah, on, off of Chisholm. Chisholm. Well, we're looking to off have Chisholm. a drive on Chisholm. Okay. Thank you. All right. Mr. Mr. Skinner, mm -hmm. may I answer? Tell me, yeah. so let's say. We had a magic wand, which we don't, and there was no alley between the church and that parking, mm -hmm. and that's just you know a paper alley. It's not ever going to be used by anybody, so it's just sitting there. What variances would we still need? Um, more the buffers at that point. Correct. I mean the the encroachment, as Ms. Baker pointed out, um, the street and alley closure that we sort of mentioned that would have gotten rid of there and that was the sort of the original variance that sort of yeah. got here we reworked the site plan and that's when the sort of buffer the parking sort of came into play um because you can't park in the that it called for parking in the front you can't park in the front plus with the hill anyways it was just going to kind of be a magic wand if you will situation um so yes it would still be the buffers um and then just for the off-site parking in general okay is there a variance needed? Um, I'm trying to read through real quick. Are they required to have an in and out drive or just uh, like where two cars can fit or is, that'd be nice, but that's not necessarily code? Correct. There was, since it's considered a non-residential drive, uh -huh. there was no real regulations um, calling for how wide it needed to be. The residential driveways do, but um, not non-residential. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any other questions? No, Mr. Skinner, just to yeah, make that, sure. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> just to make sure I'm understanding all this correctly. So the alley right now is currently a public alley. Correct. And then the, the, the section of land that separates um, the future lot, that's also a public, uh, that's further south of the current lot. That separates the, the other parcel. That's also currently a public alley. Yes. I mean, a, a road or right away. Yes, it's, it's yeah, an unbuilt it was street. Yeah. To be, yes. Uh, uh, and currently, the use of a church is permitted by right in this lot. Yes, sir. They can go in just about most all residential um, zoning districts. Yeah. Um, they just have to have a certain size, um, you know, lot, 20,000 square foot lot, which this does meet. 
Thank you. Ms. Baker? Yes, uh, I thought I heard somebody say that you also own the next, oh, n south of that paper alley, uh, you also own the next property over that goes out to the, the street. Chisholm, the goes Chisholm. out to Chisholm. Yeah. So I, I guess my question uh, is twofold. I'm wondering, number one, why you didn't bring that in, too, with this. It should have. I don't know how. And, you know. and, mm -hmm. and number two, you know, would that kind of help the the circulation yeah. issues with respect to the more narrow drive going out to Shelby Drive, yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're. you know, that you would have this alternative access uh, to uh, the other street, the, the north-south street. I can't remember the name of it. Chisholm. Chisholm. Yeah. Chisholm. <laughs> Uh, and then I have one other question, and, uh, you know, I, I know it's past the time of asking the staff, but uh, I can ask you, and then the staff can maybe chime in. <laughs> uh, I'm just wondering if it would help any if uh, if that drive, uh, you know, on the north side of the church, if it was just widened out, you know, for the length of that it could to 18 or something, you know, would that help matters with respect to, to be a minimum of I mean, there was concern yeah. expressed about one car coming in and one car going out. Uh, when you look at the area that we own over there on Chisholm, the yeah. plan was to enter on Chisholm and exit on Shelby Drive, not to enter and exit on Shelby, off of Shelby Drive. Okay. So enter on Chisholm. And exit on Shelby Drive. Is, Mr. Mr. Skinner, can you is that even the, possible? Can you pull up the yeah. this one showing all the yeah. separate parcels? Mm -hmm. Because I mean they don't they 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 touch like so you tangentially. Own, you have this and yeah. this, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. So how are you how are we getting from here to here? We would need that we'd have to go through the street and alley closure to like get to make sure that they could <laughs> have all of that land. I think that would probably be the easiest thing at this at this point to try and. So even if you went through a street and alley closure, and they owned half of what touches their lot, they're still going to touch at corners, mm -hmm. which have an have a very small point that they actually touch. They wouldn't actually have access to that lot that is without a neighbor joining in. So I don't think that we can really think about that other thing because that's right four yeah. steps down the road if it could ever happen. Mm. Well, like I said, we could always uh, park there and then drive to use the van to drive to mm -hmm. the other part, so. That's a, that is a possibility. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you don't have that approved and it would be remote from the church and you'd have to we don't have bring it in, approved. yeah. We don't have what approved? The, uh, this other parking lot. The uh, other parking well, lot is. It's, it's, we own it. Yeah. Yeah, but, but, you, but you don't have, you just can't build a parking lot. No, 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 but it's in, we're in the process of the, the, the variance so we can start yeah. to, to build. build. So I, I think I'm confused. Is it this piece of property down here in the blue? Is that the one they own? Can you, see, can you look on no, the No, the one next to it, Mary. Look to the right. Here, yes, here? that one down. Yeah. One more, that, yes. Oh, that, right. okay, I was thinking it so it's, this so it, one. So it's catty corner to where the parking lot now is going. So okay. even if those... Right. Alleys closed, they'd only touch with those right. corners Got touching. It. It I, I was be... looking at the wrong property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But well, we're just voting on 06. On that's all we're, and, and we I just want to remind the board that's what we're voting on because that's that. that other lot, while it could happen, there's no real guarantee that that could happen. Right. right. So you guys will nice have to it, come though. back for the if, other lot. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. want to convert it to a parking lot. Right. Uh, but we understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We don't. Okay, any other questions for the applicant? Seeing none. All right, thank you all both for coming down. If any, I wanted to see if anybody would look, give us a motion to approve BOA 19-132 as conditioned by staff. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, do you all have any discussion? Okay, I got to help you understand. Yeah. Uh, so we're entering. From Shelby Drive. From Shelby and then exiting off. No. Oh, only Shelby. 
You don't even worry about the chisel. Enter right on now. chisel, exit on shovel drop. So, okay. Let me look at my stuff again. So, I'll give my I'll give my thoughts. I mean, this is a variance request if I've ever heard one. <laughs> I mean, you have a landlocked piece of property that can't really be used for much else. This is exactly what we what we do. What variants were, were made for. We gotta decide if it fits in this case and if it's not if we don't think it's injurious, you know, clearly the neighbors don't want it and don't think it's or think it's injurious. Do we think it's injurious? I think it fits the odd oh, lot. It's an old church is allowed use and this lot needs to find a way to get used because that's what we like to do with lots. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's really where I'd want to lead the discussion. And really, I think our, our discussion is, do we think it's injurious? But y'all might think it's something else. That's just my thought. No, I it. agree. That's, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. When, when okay. Well, I'm going to lead in with that. Mm -hmm. With that. Um, it's already there. Um, and they need somewhere to park. I think if we give them, and I think they have the directive of the buffering, um, it's not going to harm the neighbors. I don't think it is a very difficult piece of property <laughs> to try to um, to work with. Um, so I just think if we really amp up the buffering, and, and and that but that driveway entrance is, is bothersome to me though. I do mm -hmm. have a concern with that being so closed. Um I would would ask, you know, I don't know if we can recommend that they extend that out maybe twenty feet. I don't know. Well there's no there's no there's room. No room. Mm -hmm. So um give up a lot of tea parking lot space. <laughs> but uh that's I you know, I, I think they really are uh, hands are tied here, and they look like they need the parking. Um, so I'm probably. I think I think we're weighing, you know, two issues here. Like I mean, clearly the the neighbors can say, well, if we're injured, it's not like we what it used to be. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's right. more going on than used to happen there. I got it. But the, but then the competing interest is the right of a landowner to use their property, and I think I would. I think I'd have to side with the church on that. I don't. I think the injury that is there is small enough compared to the use that you're getting out of it that it that it outweighs it. The question that I have though is, does it solve the problem? Solve some of the problem. And it sounds like rough rough numbers. It sounds like it solves yeah some of the problem. Mm -hmm. It will not solve the problem of Memphis Drive. <laughs> they just park wherever they're going to take up to. You might actually have, you know, five less spaces because somebody's going to park in two across the line <laughs> in two spaces. And they're going to be in a Kia, not a Benz. So that's just the way Memphis go. So I want to I, I know if it solves the problem. I don't know if extra space makes the neighbors feel any more comfortable. So, but you're definitely going to have to comb your property to keep people off and people run over cones also. Well, I so mean, a I lot of know. churches have people that are out there or secure, yeah. for parking. Yeah, security. And, it can, and so I would like to maybe introduce a condition that during, you know, um, Regular church, Regular church activities, there's somebody on duty to make sure people aren't parking where they're not supposed to. And, spe and so larger it, special events. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, so we're going to put ANCA as a condition, though. So as a condi condition number six is church shall provide a uh, parking attendant, to parking monitor to monitor parking to make sure it's all legally done. Mm -hmm. Would that work for, would that condition, I need to make that nicer for you, Mr. Whitehead, or can you like it, make it nicer for me? But you gotta. We need to specify during regular Sunday service and larger special. You know, like weddings, funerals. Yeah. What is the pastor's during, during, anniversary? During and all that. services and special events. Mm -hmm. We conditioned it on, or have staff conditioned it on engineering, thinking about taking a whole block of pervious and making uh, it a well, sheet of concrete. 
Is it another having it approved the design and number of curb cuts? Mm -hmm. um, I would think that. I don't know. They gave comments, but I don't know. Number three. Start sheet draining into somebody's backyard. Do, do you think we need to add that, uh, or is that something that's already done, uh, Mr. Whitehead, as far as engineering and drainage and stuff like that? Uh, this is not conditioned currently to go to the city engineer's office except for uh, the, the permitting of the curb cut, the new curb cut. Okay. Can we then add to number three? Uh, city engineer shall approve the design, number, and location of curb cuts, and uh, drainage. That's right, if needed. Yeah, so. Well, so they approve it. Yeah, yeah, approved, point, yeah. Okay. It is on the slope. Uh, Mr. Chairman, as you ponder, as the board ponders that condition, I, I hearken back to Ms. Baker's comments about uh, the, the South Third site plan improvements. Engineering site plan review is the ultimate in site plan review. It, it comes with a $750 charge and it also comes with a two to three month review period. So I just want to share with the board that information. Um, I think that's maybe where Mr. Claybrook was coming with his comma as, or comma if needed, but uh, I just want to put that. Would you like to elaborate that on Mr. Mr. Claybrook, I mean, like, you know more about the engineering, just the some development stuff probably than I do, of why it wouldn't be needed. Does that make sense? I mean, if there's a, it, it looks like it's in the middle of the woods, so I think there's plenty of impervious soil to, or excuse me, pervious soil to soak up any, Okay. you know, they're not putting yeah. a massive parking lot there. That was just a thought. Uh, you know, we dealt with so many people I putting in driveways and stuff, and their next-door neighbor all of a sudden has flooding in their backyard. But there looks like there's plenty of buffer with these lots that were never sold or uh, I guess true, sold yeah. to somebody but never developed on. Mm. I guess if I guess my question is if we put the if needed, how do we know when it's needed? What's our triggering for the if needed? We can just strike it and not do it. Okay. How about that? <laughs> okay. Right, so but Mr. Chairman, you asked me to read reiterate to you a new condition six. Yes, yes, sir. And I wrote the church shall provide a parking attendant on duty during Sunday service and special events to ensure parking is in accordance with the site plan. Okay, perfect. And um, I'll share this with you, Mr. Skinner. What I, one of the, my concerns there, I think, is making sure that as people park on the street, they're not parking in front of people's driveways. Mm -hmm. And so... I think I would add that parking for church attendees is done legally. I'm, I'm assuming it's illegal to park in front of somebody's driveway. Can I add this? To, uh, this is my response. Yeah. Felicia Campbell's with us from Construction Code Enforcement. Her ticket um, comes with it uh, a much, much smaller surcharge than a ticket from the police department and a, a city... Uh, licensed wrecking service for uh, blocking a driveway. So we could add a condition, but the the real uh, enforcement of that would be much more So the neighbors, if someone's intense. blocking their drive, they can call the city and that wrecker comes out. Yes, sir. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. That, that helps. That helps. You can have them towed or they block their driveway. Okay, does anyone have a uh, problem with adding the amendment or adding condition six as Josh read out a few moments ago. No. Seeing none, that'll be added to our to our vote. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, I assume you're ready to vote. Mr. Whitehead, can we get a roll call vote? Ms. Baker. Yes. Ms. Doss. Yes. Mr. Malazari. Yes. Mr. Claybrook. Yes. Uh, Ms. Scurlock. Yes. Vice Chair Savage Towns. Yes, I find that the standards of 9.22.6 of the UDC are being met and would not be unduly detrimental to the properties in the vicinity. Mr. Chairman. Yes. We have seven eyes. Right, thank you. You've been approved. Now be good neighbors. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Whitehead, would you call the next case, please? Uh, the next case is a, agenda item number eight, which is docket BOA 20-2, located at 1615 Union. 
The applicant is Valvoline Instant Oil Change. The use district is the CMU3 Commercial District within the Midtown Overlay. And the variances are from a platted setback, the Bickford's Union Pair Subdivision, and um, a, set, a variance to 8411 related to the streetscape. Okay. Um, see the applicant's present. And uh, the opposition, I think, if you would come forward, please. Because they were asking for a hold, but he had a question we might could get answered. I'm sorry. Um, and so I'm going to swear him in real quick, let him ask his question, and then let you swear you in and respond. And maybe that okay. might. I think that would okay. be great. So, Mr. Is it Crawford Gordon. or Cor Gordon. Gordon? If you give your name and address for the record, and then once you, I'll swear you in, and then we'll give the question. Uh, is it Survivor Gordon, 1594 Harbridge? Memphis, three Okay, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, help you God? I do. All right, did you have a question we could answer, maybe, that you uh, had to wait for? Yes, uh, well, it was about whether we would uh, understand that there's been a hold requested mm -hmm. for 30 days. So some questions about that. Will we see the redesign? Who is the, who's the we? Just the so we public answer. of the city of Memphis, Tennessee. Okay, all right, perfect. Thank you. And, 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 and then, but that's not my, but then, you know, if, if if they painted it with uh, rainbows and unicorns, it would still be a Valvoline in the middle of Union Avenue. So I, I don't think the change in site plan is going to change my opinion. So I, I'm happy to hold that for 30 days. But if you guys are going in, I didn't know if there was an understanding that if they came back with a revision, then that would fly. Whatever that oh, yeah, would be. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah, I want to make yeah, sure that. Yeah, I've not seen the revision here, right? to, to know, but yeah. But I mean, if they meet, if they come back, I, I assume if there's a revision, the uh, committee has given them, um, you know, there's there's things we would, that we would hold the full hearing just like we could have today, but uh -huh. without the revised information. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. So that's why we would prefer to hold it, but we also want you to be informed. Okay. So. Okay. okay. Well, I didn't mind sitting through to. Oh, it was get fun. Informed, wasn't it? But yeah. let's. Um, but yeah. So how will how will we? Okay. So see it? if the applicant will come up and uh, Cindy, if you'll give your name and address for the record. Cindy Reeves, SR Consulting, fifty nine zero nine Shelby Oaks Drive, Suite two hundred. All right. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Help you guide. I do. Okay. And yes, we will share this revised site plan with the public and with staff, city engineering, and T dot. How will it get? How would how would how would the public get a copy of it? I gave him my card, and I know that you post things on next door. And it's public as soon as it hits their door. Everything in City Hall is public information as soon as you hand it to the city. Will, will the revised staff report that includes that go up on our website like this Absolutely. one did? Absolutely. Okay. So the revised staff report. And I also gave him my card. If he wants to contact me direct, then I'll be glad to, to talk to him and speak. Okay. talk him through the changes that we've made. Okay. But we're meeting with TDOT and City Engineering and then after they tell us what we can do as far as access, then it's got to go up the Valvoline chain and get their approval of the new site plan. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, right. So, Mr. Chairman, can can we do this in 30 days? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and then how much feedback time? If it's got to go, if y'all have to make have all these meetings. Mr. Hold Chairman, on, you, we're going to. You can't speak from the floor, so yeah. let's have them. Do you have anything you want to say to that? We can do this in 30 days. Okay. Before 30 days. <laughs> okay. Um, we don't have to allow any, we can just vote on the hold, correct? Yeah. Do we need to, okay. okay. So, do we want to hear more from the opposition or do you want to vote on the hold now? Does anybody have a preference for that? I would. I'd like to hear. Yeah, he's got a quick okay. question. Okay. All right, go ahead. Come on up. So, if that sounds like a lot to happen in. 30 days, especially involving city clients and corporate ones. So how much time, is there a guarantee that how much time the public gets to see it? If, if I get, if I miss it on next door and someone has to tell me the next day, hey, it's on next door, am, am I, how much time will, you know, if I've lost a day, is that? The, the staff reports are posted the Friday before the meeting. So it'll have to be posted then. Okay. Okay. All right, very good. And if I may add to that, Mr. Yes. Chairman, that would be the latest time. I would imagine that uh, Mr. Gordon will be in communication with either Ms. Reeves and Mr. Davis, our staff planner on this case, and if we have that before that last drop-dead deadline, which is Friday, okay. uh, then that could be shared well in advance of that. 
But that does not, as we often know, sometimes there are last minute tweaks from the floor and so we can't uh, close the possibility of that happening, right? Add this buffer here, widen that island thusly, et cetera. Okay. And that's why I shared my card with him so that he knows how to contact me. Okay. Um, any other questions? So that is, would someone like give a motion to approve the hold for agenda I or BOA 20-2? So moved. Second. Uh, all right. Uh, with that, I'll do it. All those in favor, so you can have a saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you both. Thank you for waiting. Uh, Mr. Whitehead, would you call the next case for us? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Agenda item number nine is docket BOA 20-3, located between Henry Safaran's front and the Canadian National Railroad. The applicant is Keel Street LLC and Wolf River Holdings LLC. The use districts are the MU Mixed Use District, the MDR Moderate Density District, the Heavy Industrial IH District, uh, as well as the High Density HDR Residential District. And the request is a use variance from 252 and bulk variance from sections 432 and 3102B. Okay, I see and I have a card. Do applicants present? We have Mr. Blinky. Anybody else here in opposition? Okay, just one. Okay. With that, uh, Ms. Shelton, will you give us a brief staff report? Teresa Shelton, Office of Planning and Development. Uh, this case is BOA 2003. Uh, location is bound on the north by Henry Avenue, on the east by North Front Street along the south by Saffron Avenue and the west by Illinois Central Railroad and consisting of two parcels. Uh, the owner applicant is Keel Street LLC and Wolf River Harbor Holdings LLC. Representative is Mr. Michael J. Fahey. The request is the use variance for section 2.5.2 and the site variance from sections 4.3.2 and 3.10.2b to allow redevelopment of two parcels. I'm trying to get my sure. <laughs> presentation up, but I'm having a little so issue. So you're stalling. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm stalling a little bit. Just bear with me. Would you like to know? I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. Graduated from Jackson State one time. <laughs> I was trying to get a little time because I can't get this to come up. What did you do, Brett? <laughs> Jeffrey, can you come help? She's trying to travel. Oh, there, there go. we go. Uh, apologize. Bear with me. <laughs> okay. Which way am I operating? I'm not used to this trick. Oh, this. Okay. Okay. So Y'all have to forgive me. This is my first time presenting, so bear with me. The request and justification of all of the um, The request bound by north of Henry on the east of North Front, um, along the south of Saffron Avenue and west of the Illinois Central Railroad, consisting of the two parcels. This is the location um, of the property, the subject property in question. The vicinity map uh, is highlighted, it shows in yellow for the subject property. It runs from Henry all the way down to Saffron. And this is the Conwood phase one, um, which is the site plan, the actual site plan. So I asked um, Mr. Fahey to kind of give me a little bit um, better site plan where you all can kind of visualize what's going to happen with the project as it goes on the way. We sent out 88 notices uh, that were mailed out. This is the phase two uh, of Conwood. I think this is the north.
okay? And this is North Front Street Section A and North Front Street Section B. North Front Street Section C. Here's an area map of the subject project property. And the subject property highlighted in yellow, the existing zoning is heavy industrial. Surrounding zones are heavy industrial, mixed use, high density residential, um, heavy industrial to the south. To the west, you got heavy industrial and with the floodplain, then commercial mixed use three and floodplain. This is a land use map showing the subject property and existing properties around it. Here's a, propo a proposed elevation of what the SNUP project, what they're working on or they're trying to do here. It's a very beautiful architectural picture. And here are some site photos of the actual property. You can view the subject property from Saffron Avenue in North Front Street, looking northeast. Um, there's also a view from North Front Street looking southeast. <coughs> Here's a property that's located at Keel and Front Street, looking north. And this is the view of the property from North Street, looking south, going toward Henry. In conclusion, the request is a variance, uh, use variance for section 2.5.2, uses permitted table of the Unified Development Code and from section 3.10.2b to reduce the required front setback to 10 feet along North Front Street for Conwood North and South, both parcels, and to allow zero side um, yard setback along North and South right of Keel Avenue and to allow a zero rear yard setback along the railroad frontage, both parcels, and to allow maximum building height not to exceed 80 feet for both parcels. Also a variance from section 4.32 to allow a modified landscape plate along the North Front Street frontage of the Conwood North parcel. This lo the location of this uh, development consists of two parcels in the Snuff District um, to allow residential apartments in the heavy uh, industrial district. The granting of this variance will not cause substantial det uh, detriment to the public good, nor will it um, substantially impaired the intent and purpose of the adopted plan or the code, nor will it be injurious to the neighborhood or the general welfare, and it will be harmony with the purpose and intent of the development code. Staff recommendations with conditions, and I have put uh, an additional condition in. The first condition is any change or deviation from the site plan upon the termination of planning uh, director shall be submitted to the Board of Adjustments for review and approval or, the, uh, or administrative review and approval by the Office of Planning and Development. Second condition, a maximum building height not to exceed 80 feet for both parcels. Third, there shall be a modified landscape plate uh, along the North Front Street frontage of the Conway North parcel subject to approval by the Office of Planning and Development. I added this fourth con condition. Uh, and Mr. Chairman, uh, when we get to the fourth condition, I have a, a revised language on number four. So just call on me before we okay. have a motion. Let me go. Ahead. We'll, I'll do it later. Okay. Okay. All right. So that is conclusion of okay. number four. Perfect. Thank you, Ms. Shelton. Are there any questions from Ms. Shelton at this time? Well, well, I think I have a question. Um, I noticed that the use, the request is a use variance and site variance uh, to allow redevelopment of two parcels, but it's not specific on the uses that will be permitted if this is approved. And I see back here on uh, page 24, the staff report, it says office with apartments, <coughs> garage, with retail and apartments and surface parking lot. Is that what's being requested? Okay, so I, I think that probably needs to be 
clear on whatever we vote on. What because it's a use variance. Okay. So just want to make clear what the uses we're voting on are. Okay. Very good. Um, Mr. Fay. Uh, your name and address for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Michael Fay, Prime Development Group, 7520 Capitol Drive, Germantown, Tennessee. Mr. Berg, call the truth, call the truth, and we'll have the truth, shall we go? Yes, sir, I do. Okay, go ahead. Do you have anything you'd like to add to what Ms. Shelton prepared? No, we're in complete agreement with staff. We've been working with Teresa on this site. Um, as many of you are aware, this is the old snuff building where Varsity Sports is going to move their headquarters down to. That old building will remain in place. It is a historic building, so there's a remodeling going on with that. And there are, because you're dealing with downtown, we need these various adjustments and setbacks so that we can fit all the things we need to do to take an old building and bring it into the, into the new world. But other than that, we're in complete agreement with staff, and we appreciate the help from Teresa. Okay, very good. Any questions for Mr. Fay? Seeing that, we'll move to the opposition, and you have reserved 11 minutes and 20 seconds. Uh, Mr. Belenke, do you want to come talk to us? If you'll give your name and address for the record for us. Charles Belenke, 5019 Welshire Avenue, Memphis, Tennessee. Okay. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be God? I do. Okay, go ahead. What would you like to share today? So, first I have a question about Keel. How wide is Keel? And Mr. Again, Chairman, from, from on questions like address. this, why don't we get all the questions okay, presented, you, sure. and then we'll answer at the end of the... Yeah. yeah. So... My question is, how wide is Keel? Okay. Is any of this project going to encroach on Keel or reduce its width? Will it be open across the tracks? It seems to me important that the public have access from front across the tracks to the harbor side. Um, I've, I've lived in places where access to the waterfront is very hard to obtain. Um, you know, property owners don't like people cutting across their property. And I could see how the residents here might think of Keel as, as their promenade and not a public street. So I'd like it to be to be clear that this is going to remain a public street. Um, I'd like some condition that the um, developer will improve Keel across the tracks so that, say, wheelchair people using Keel can get across the tracks and then down into the harbor. Um, that uh, park-like area, I guess, is what I'd call it. Um, and uh, those are really my concerns. Thank you. Okay. Are there any questions for Mr. Uh, Belinke? Uh, I have a quick question. I know you live in East Memphis on Welshire. Do you have, are you in this area or just concerned citizen? Just curious. Um, it's an area I've considered relocating to. Okay. There's, it's pretty d nice, but also dull where I live. <laughs> and, um, I own a lot in Binghampton, and, I, and I've been looking at a lot of the um, the houses in Uptown that have been coming on the market sure. as the uh, restrictions. So I may very well be a neighbor, but I'm not yet. Okay, just just curious. Yeah. Um, any other questions for Mr. Belinke? Seeing none. Thank you so much. Is there any other anybody else here to speak in opposition? Okay, we'll move back to the applicant. Let's see if maybe you can help us with some of these questions. Or I think I can, Mr. Chairman. Okay. First, Mr. Belenke, we want to be a neighbor. We, we really do. Um, what we are, what, when we look in this area, there's not a whole lot of activity. And this, that the city engineer calls this the end of the street. <laughs> um, so first of all, to answer your question, Keel Street, the promenade idea, that is paramount in our plan. Could we go back to that, the elevation that you were pointing out? <coughs> Is there a color rendering? The promenade that we're talking about is paramount in this application because what the architects have been working on from day one is the ability for people to be able to go from this facility to the river. Now, there's only one problem on Keel Street. When you get down there, there's a bridge. So we're working on that. But as you see in this particular, that is Keel Street. Yeah. So that promenade will continue. That is paramount. And as you see in the picture, it's hard to see in the back. You can see the opening that will remain in place. We're working on various issues with flood matters, but that is paramount in there. So this plan, this application before you today, 
Peel Street stays, and we do want, we're in the same boat that we want people to be able to go down from here to the river. I will point out to you too that my clients own the property on the other side of the railroad tracks. So they have a serious vested interest that this is all interconnected. Is is the Peel, is it closed to traffic there? But it is open a to dead end. It is a I mean, dead like end road. Where the people are walking in the picture, the, no car is going to go down Peel. Right. It is not our plan is to turn it into a uh, pedestrian public problem. pedestrian okay. access, right? Okay. But it is a public right of way. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Okay. Um, any other? Let's see. Did, did did you say what the plan is? is? There even a plan other than to have park light space on the other side of the tracks? I mean, that's in the floodplain, or it's, is it all in the floodplain? It, it's. There are so many plans, Mr. Chairman, after two years, I can't answer yeah. honestly what it is. There are, they are looking at various methods of development. They would like to see some type of residential sure. over in that area, but once again, we're in a flood zone and there, there are a lot of factors that in have a flood zone and that property out. is privately owned property. Yes, property. Sir. Yeah. It is. Okay. Um, any other questions for Mr. Fay? Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, yes, please. There were some comments uh, made earlier, I think, by Ms. Baker about limiting the extent of this use variance by adding a condition. So I have a question for Mr. Fay. Would he be amenable to, uh, and I still haven't articulated number condition number four yet, but number five would read something to the effect of the following uses shall be permitted on the site, colon, A, apartments, B, upper story residential and C, uh, parking garage. Yeah, parking garage. I mean, the intent is for the section that is what we're calling the southern parcel, the track that does not have the Conrad building. That's going to be a mixed-use facility. So the lower floors would be res would be commercial, residential above, and then also a garage incorporated into the whole plan. So C is parking garage. D is offices for varsity. Right. And then E, do we? Anticipate any commercial uses that do, that that do not have apartments above them. No. Okay. So apartments, upper story residential, parking garage, and offices. Yeah, I would say an apartments and uh, you know whatever facilities that an apartment may want. Right. They may, they may have. Yeah. I don't know, may have some yeah. softball court. I mean, some volleyball yeah. court or something like that. But amenities that would go yeah. with apartments. E, uh, accessory uses. To, to all uses uh, above. And Mr. Chairman, condition number four, which I think Mr. Fay is also amenable to, would read, there shall be a zero foot setback along Safarans and Keel, comma, a zero foot setback along the railroad frontage and a 10 foot setback along North Front. Right. And that's okay. So we totally articulate that then. Did okay. we answer um, the question about ADA compliance? The other question about wheel, wheelchair accessibility? Well, I don't think we have a choice. Well, it's still still a public street. Okay. So we will have to Ms. Doss, yeah. nor do we. ADA is. Okay. ADA. Must yeah. be met, period. Okay. That's more important than blocking uh, driveways. You know how the railroad owns the property next door if they if it was deeded to them or if it was charter we can find you mean the railroad i just know that a lot north? of times uh, the railroad you know jack is that those are like the tracks that who goes on the the tracks that separate this property from the river it still is active um is that the illinois is that the or is that i think it's illinois is it illinois central yeah it's like the amtrak goes on it and stuff like that Occasionally, but I think it's primarily just uh, okay. three to four. It's not much traffic. Okay, yeah. So uh, I just know that if they if it's not done by deed, they have the ability to widen it. Probably, you know, railroads. Well, in don't this particular case, line. we have a historic building that is already abutting it. So yeah. I think we might be okay. Okay, be careful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, any other questions? Seeing none. I assume you're ready to vote. Could somebody give me a motion to approve BOA 20-03 as conditioned by staff? So moved. Second. Second. All right. Is there any discussion at this point? Looks like a looks like a good project. 
so going to keep that street where the public can use it. So I think that sounds great. Um, Mr. Whitehead, will you give us a roll call vote? Yes, sir. And I have noted that Mr. Malazari has recused. Right, thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Savage Towns. Yes, I find that the standards of 9.22.6 of the UDC are being met and would not be unduly detrimental to the properties in the vicinity. Ms. Doss. Yes. Mr. Claybrook. Yes. Ms. Baker. Yes. Ms. Scurlock. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Six eyes. All right. Thank you very much. You're approved. Thank you all both for coming down. Uh, Mr. White, have you called the next case for us? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, agenda item number 12 which is docket BOA 20-6, located at 42210 Prescott. The applicant is Gerardo Romero, and the request is a time extension to docket BOA 1810 to allow horses on a permanent basis. Okay. And this is uh, this is one of our first sunsets to come back, isn't it? Is this a sunset? Uh, uh, yes, other than the four-month sunset on Crestview. Oh, okay. That was withdrawn. It has successfully come back. <laughs> yes. Well, maybe not. Yes. We'll see. Um, <laughs> Mr. Romero, you want to come down front for us? Um, and then Mr. Uh, Penzis, is there the any opposition the to this case that's here today? Right there. Okay. Mr. Penzis, you'll give us a uh, brief staff report. <laughs> I think we all, or a lot of us, maybe not uh, JP and Mary, but some of us remember it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember this. I remember yeah, I remember that house. And y'all can have a seat. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay. Jeffrey Penzis, Oscar Plan Development, this is BOA 2006, located at 4200 and 4210 Prescott Road. It's a time extension to docket number BOA 1810 to allow horses on a permanent basis. Uh, the existing building is residential single family eight, and the applicant is not. It's in the Oak Haven neighborhood. Uh, the blue star represents the property showing that the uh, residential single family eight. Uh, this is just the land use in this area. There's a mix. There's, there's office to the west. There's also single family to the west, north, and south. And there is some industrial to the north and south. Uh, these are just some site photos of the subject property. And this is the site plan. Now, uh, so on January 14, 2020, the Office of Construction Code Enforcement conducted a site visit to the subject property, and this is basically a summary of that site survey. So they found 11 horses were located in the horse stable on site. As per the BOA 1810 conditions, a maximum of five were allowed. Uh, the applicant had later provided 16 veterinary forms indicating the ownership of horses. It's unclear if the additional five horses were boarded on the site and just not there at the time, or why their information was provided otherwise. So, but of those 16 forms that were provided, only one horse's owner was listed as Gerardo Romero, who is the applicant slash property owner. And per the board's conditions, all five of the horses that were allowed were supposed to be owned by the applicant slash property owner. And also, they noted that the fencing conditions were not being met as well. So in conclusion, the granting of this variance will cause substantial detriment to the public good. It will substantially impair the intent and purpose of an adopted plan or code. And it will be injurious to the neighborhood or general welfare. And it will not be in harmony with the purpose and intent of the development code, essentially because the applicant and owner has failed to adhere to even the conditions that were set out last time. So with that, we recommend you go. Okay. Thank you, uh, Jeffrey. Are there any questions for Mr. Penzis? Were they cited on this visit on the 14th of any of these violations? They were cited for some additional violations. We have a Inspector Campbell with the Office of Construction Code Enforcement can speak to that. Cited for at the, uh, Ms. Campbell, oh, Ms. Campbell we, you I have need you to, to come up and swear. You come up. You get to be sworn in. <laughs> well, Ms. Campbell. If you'll give your name and address for the record, Ms. Campbell. Felicia Campbell, 4496 Queen Sinclair, Millicent, Tennessee. Okay. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be God? Yes, I do. Okay. Go ahead and speak to um, us. Mr. Ramiro's father, I'm not sure if it was written to his father or him, they were cited for the fence and um, improper outdoor storage 
um, and he we didn't cite him to remove the pot the, the porta potty, but I told him that he needs to remove that and um, just clean up the property, take everything off of it that's not um, that's not used for. We just have a few things laying around, but mainly the mainly the um, the vehicles and the fence. Okay. And he needs to get um, get with Burke well about clearing the trees. Okay, and those were things that have nothing to do with our prior case. That's just code enforcement uh, issues. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions for Miss Campbell? Not now. Right. Thank, Thank you, Miss Campbell. Yeah. All right. Um, if the applicant would like to come forward and speak about this, Jeffrey, thank you. I was going to ask you to put that up. So um, give us your thoughts on these, what we've had from the site visit. Okay. Um, it, was a, it was a crew. Oh, well, let me uh, give your name and address for the record so I can swear you in. Thank you, Ms. Okay. Paul. I'm uh, Gerardo Romero, son, Luis Romero. Okay. Uh, I live at 3020 Press, I mean, 3020 Danville Road, Memphis, Tennessee. Okay, let me, let me swear you in. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead, sir. Okay, so uh, we were approved to have only five horses on the site. Uh, not too long ago before they came out was uh, two, three days, we had a storm out in Mississippi where uh, we had the rest of these horses that uh, the storm flew their shelter off. So what we did is uh, we hold them here at this location for two, three days, like I said, Till we got that shelter back standing for them to be back out there in Mississippi where they were. It just happens that they came by the, at those days that they were there. But they are not there now. Uh, the property is, th there was a fence installed the last two years when we got approved that we were asked to put a chain link fence around the property, also along with just having four horses approved. Now, uh, the fence, we have a wooden fence that's a, uh, I want to say it's about five to six feet tall along the front. Uh, I understand that it has to be four feet, uh, so we are thinking about reducing that down. And it does have fence, and we finished up the fencing around the perimeter for uh, to be able to come here to the meeting. But these horses were not there, uh, like I said, uh, the past time. It, well, they were only there for two, three days. Uh, like I said, it, we had a storm back then. Uh, like two, uh, like a week ago, out in Mississippi, and it did blew out their shelter. So that is why they were there. And uh, he wants to know just in, uh, if it's gonna get rejected. He wants to know how much time he can get for him to be able to get find a good place to have them at and settle them there. Okay. Um, are there any questions for Mr. Romero? I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, go ahead, Ms. Baker. Uh, give, give us an idea about how much time you think you would need to move everything. Well, on. he's uh, financing a, uh, he's looking for a barn to financial. He's already done the paperwork through the bank and everything, and he is uh, going out to look at some properties now. So, I mean, all, all the time that we would need would be just time for the paperwork to go through. <coughs> And all of that. <coughs> so I was thinking about two to three months. So he's getting financing to build a new barn for the horses. No, or? to get uh to purchase a new property. It's a completely different property. Yes. Would be allowed. Um, okay. I mean, knowing that's happening kind of makes it easier on us. It seems. Um, I get that. That you know, I. I, I if there was a storm, I know the one you're talking about. That yeah, in, in yeah. North cause... Mississippi, about that time. Yes, yeah, sir. But uh, some of the other things were very concerning. But knowing that he was going to move them, any trying to move them anyway, now that I'd be willing to give like a four month sunset on them being removed. Mm -hmm. That sounds that he said two to three. They give them a little extra time. Mm -hmm. And that seems to get everybody where they need to be on this, probably. Um, that's my thought. We're not even in the discussion yet. Is there any other questions for <laughs> Mr. Romero? <laughs> not at this time. All right. I don't. Mr. Chairman, I just had a suggestion. Yes, please. Uh, Mr. Romero, uh, CA stands for Conservation Agricultural Zoning District. That is the one zoning district in Shelby County where 
horses would be permitted by right. Sometimes there's large tracts of land that look like they're agriculturally zoned, but they're in fact R6 or R10, and that r requires a revisit to, to this body. So yeah. if you find a CA zoning, yeah, we wasn't that keeps that you from seeing us again. But now, <laughs> your lesson on that one? Yeah, now yeah. we have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Secretary. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Is there anybody here in opposition? We saw that. Okay, seeing none. Um, would anybody like to give a motion to approve BOA 20-6, and then we'll get into discussion? So moved. Second. So, Mr. Whitehead, I think I need some help on this one in how procedurally, if, if the board wanted to give them a four-month sunset until this activity must cease, how would be the best way of doing that? Uh, seems like we could just strike the six conditions that are on page 16 of your uh -huh. staff report and just place one condition that all horses shall be removed from the site in f four months, if that's the, the time period. Okay, and so I would look around to the board just to make sure that that amendment to those conditions is uh, amenable to everyone, and if so, we could vote on that. Are uh, we saying four months or six months? Oh, four months. Four months. Uh, you can't talk, but Mr. Uh, Malazri. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'd ask the, if they're trying to actually move the horses out to find the right place to put these horses, I'd actually be amenable to actually giving them more time to look at these. I'd be okay so with six months. Six months? Yeah. Six months. Okay. Yeah. Any ob uh, objection to six months? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, so we're voting on six months here. Um, and Mr. Whitehead, would you give us a roll call vote, please? Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Doss? Yes. Ms. Baker? Yes. Uh, Madam Vice Chair? Yes. Ms. Gerlach? Yes. Mr. Malazari? Yes. Mr. Claybrook? Yes. And Mr. Chairman? Yes. Seven eyes. All right. It's approved for six months. Good luck with the new property. Okay. Thank you. All right. Mr. Whitehead, will you call the last case for this? I think it's the petition to rehear. Yes, sir. Uh, this is agenda item number 15 which is docket BOA 19-134. This is a petition to rehear uh, a request for a use variance from section 7.3.11 to allow an assisted living facility in the moderate density residential zoning district at 618 Looney. Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna have to recuse myself. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Travis Town. Okay, so is there any opposition to this case? I see the applicant here. Ms. Smith, you want to just uh, give, us a, give us a replay of last month, and then we'll have the applicant come up here and make his case to rehear that case. We'll not be actually hearing to approve today. We're only having a hearing on whether or not to have a hearing. Right. Bear with me one second. Hey, people could go home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and give a recap. Yeah, um, go ahead. Okay, yeah, this is um, for 618 Looney. It's located in the Uptown Special Purpose District in the NDR um, Modern Density Residential Zoning District. Um, this was originally filed as a special use permit for a group shelter, but after discussing with the applicant and the applicant's representative at the time, um, it was determined that the applicant's request did, was not consistent with the definition of um, group shelter, nor was it consistent with a home for the elderly um, or supportive living facility. Um, throughout this entire process, the request has changed several times. So. As it stands right now, it's still a little uncertain what the um, applicant is proposing, but uh, it was rejected, and it was going to be a, a, a assisted living facility for eight individuals with um, three staff members residing over the house. Okay. Um, let me ask you a couple questions. If we were to allow the rehearing, 
there's no refiling fee. Is that is that part of why you wouldn't just bring a different request? Does well, that make the, sense? The petition was a hundred dollar fee. Okay. So I so guess that's why. Um, and he inquired about the appeal process, which was to sure. seek independent legal counsel. Okay. Um, as it states in the um, thing she said annotated. Sure. But he she chose a rehearing. Okay. Okay. Very good. Yeah, the applicant, Mr. Or, Chairman, if I can yes, piggyback on that, yes, please. Uh, there is a rule, and it's either six months or 12 months. If you get rejected by this body, you can't refile the same application for gotcha. some time period. So that's probably reason number two. Gotcha. Okay. Um, if the applicant and their and their representative would like to come forward and speak to why you would like a rehearing. Mr. Rory, good to see you again. Can I, can I swear you in? Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, give your name and address for the record for us. Uh, Shelly Roy, 5598 Forsyth Drive. Okay, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, uh, on December 12th, uh, who I hired to consult me, I had a family emergency and he couldn't be here, so I was forced to present my case, which I'm not good at public speaking, so I was... You seem uh, great at it. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I was... Uh, I was unclear on some some points of fact, which I have brought some things that will help maybe clarify and streamline the types of patients I'm presenting. One was going to be from the VA homeless program. Uh, the other is going to be from the behavioral health and uh, the Department of Mental Health and Developmental Disability program. Both of these have uh, required licensure. And for the Department of Mental Health, they require licensure. Once initially given licensure, to, it's only granted for a year. So, with that being said, <clears throat> I was some things, something that was unclear about the unusual characteristics mm -hmm. that I didn't get a chance to speak on. <clears throat> this property has eight bedrooms on it. Uh, that's unusual for the area. And I spoke with a real estate agent by the name of Pamela Holly. I have her phone number. And she said there are, these are eight bedrooms. In order to be a bedroom, it has to have a doorway, a window, and a closet. And this house meets all those requirements. The other uh, unusual characteristic about the property is that it's 100% boarded by Girl Inc. Uh, which I brought pictures to show you that uh, when you come out the back door, this is what you're going to see. Girl Inc. Is, it, is bordering the property. Mm -hmm. I say that because it's going to uh, uh, it obstruct the view 100%. Uh, it's going to decrease any sale prop possibilities. Uh, and it also increases traffic uh, versus a residential area. Um, this, this, this facility is going to be a not-for-profit. Uh, I also spoke with uh, Jim, uh, let me see, Justin from Landmark uh, Construction Company. He told me to be able to bring this property back to its original state or use, which roughly cost $120,000. I also had the, the Pamela Holly look up what properties were going for in that area, as well as see if she could pull any property that has more than four bedrooms. She said she could not. Uh, and houses are going for about fifty to sixty thousand in that area, but I did find one with one hundred twenty-four thousand. So, to have it completely remodeled back to its original state was cost more than what the, the area is bringing. So, uh, I'm going to let my consultant speak right now. Okay, and appreciate yeah. it. All right, we'll give you your name and address. Uh, Darrell Brown, uh, eight nine nine two Graceland, okay. Cordova, Tennessee. Are you an attorney? <laughs> okay, oh, oh. I wouldn't have to swear you in if you were. That's the only reason I asked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, do you swear to tell the truth, told you the truth? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Work with attorneys, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> good evening, everybody. Yeah. Uh, I've been in healthcare 28 years as a hospital administrator mm -hmm. and a home care director. And Mr. Rory, who I found to be a very credible and quality person, and we know, I'm going to clarify, it's a supportive living, living and assisted living facility. So we had to come to that group. The last time that he, uh, December 18th, that he mm -hmm. was here, I could not attend. I had a family emergency with my mother and, and my father. Uh, as the clarification come and, and the, the paperwork was that uh, with him, when he got to the last hearing, 
we did not stay, we, we kind of had a, uh, we didn't really finish our presentation how we wanted to present it. So we clarified that and I told him the best um, way I think should be, it should be a nonprofit, not for profit, because when you go not for profit, you, you open yourself up to governance by state and local funding uh, for when you're accepting patients, uh, let's say from the VA or other uh, skilled nursing facilities or any hospitals, because when, when, when we have licensed uh, care social workers, discharge planners, one thing that they always, you know, just a kill his heels is that we, it's hard to find those facilities that are for profit that governs themselves. And you know, sometimes when you govern yourself, you don't follow by the, the rules and regulations. And it's hard to, to, to really just find a good quality, clean uh, facility that, that abides by the rules. So I just find uh, Mr. Rory uh, should probably give me another opportunity to explain his position. Okay. And, and I just think, you know, that's what it, I mean, I, Ms. like Ms. Smith had mentioned, sometimes when people don't, you know, know exactly where they are, you can help them get there right. and to the facility. And I think his facility is very much needed. Okay. Yeah. All right, very good. Is there any questions? Of I have the just one. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys already have a 501c3 or are you in a process of applying for a 501c3 already? Yeah, I have not applied for that. No, he's not applied. I mean, I'm going to help him with that particular situation. You can, yeah. Uh, that's what you're here for. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, I'm helping him with that. Uh, are y'all going to do a 501c3 or are y'all just going to do a nonprofit? We're going to do a nonprofit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're going to so do a nonprofit. The 501c3 is like beyond yeah. that. And that's yeah. like if I gave yeah. money to it, it'd be taxed. Yeah. Yeah. You can be a nonprofit without, without being a the, Okay. Yeah. Right. Because I find over my years, the 20 years, uh, I mean, you call them group homes and you, some of those facilities just, it's not suitable for living. Mm -hmm. and, and as I, was discussing with Mr. Laurie is that when you take the profit motive out of, out of it and you, you you bring the governance in it, and if you accept the state and federal funds, yeah. they can show up on your facility at any time mm -hmm. for all of them purposes to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do. You know, but if you have these, you know, you govern yourself, you know, we know we, we human beings, we, we don't always do the right things when it comes right. to care and, and, and dealing with our mentally ill. Sure. Uh, some people can't, you know, uh, fend for themselves, and they're getting taken advantage of. And in some cases, their their funds that they're given are getting taken advantage of by the facilities that are living so-called administrative or uh, anointing themselves as unlicensed administrators. So, uh, you know, that's once one reason why I the clarification comes with this okay. with this rehab. All right. Is there Mr. any Chairman, other questions? I have a question. Mm -hmm. And uh, you may have answered this, Mr. Rory, mm -hmm. um, last time. I don't remember. But how long have you owned this property? I've owned this property since 2004. So you've owned it for 15 years? Yes. Okay. That's, that's all my questions. Any other questions? Okay. We'll move to discussion. Uh, unless you give you the answer, Mr. Roy. Yeah, I do. I, I do have something to add. Is that <clears throat> if I could show you this, I've actually this has actually been a plan of mine since 2004. I initially requested the paperwork from the mental health back mm -hmm. in 2004. I, right. I went through some old files, and I also wanted to show that this house is is not something that needs to be done. It's already completed. Right. 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 Um, as some of the pictures could show, uh, it's, it's just ready to go. Oh, yeah, it's furnished and ready to go. Okay. Um, can we have these pictures? Sure. Do we need, to, do we need these pictures to go into the record, or would he bring these back, uh, Mr. Secretary? Which these same pictures I've uploaded okay. to okay. this summer already. Very good. Okay. Uh, but right. you're welcome to keep those. Here. Also, I instructed you. Um, Mr. Rory to consult his neighbors, you know, to, to sure. discuss with them to see if any no, any issues or situations. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, they may have arrived okay. for his support. Sure, in, in absolutely. Dealing with and I did speak with my neighbors. The one adjacent to me, right next door, and across the street, uh, they told me to let them know what they could do to, because they are in support of what I'm going to do. Okay, uh, great. Any other questions? And did you speak to the woman who was here last time with her family? Miss Walker. The woman that was with her family oh, or her kids? Um, no, I did not speak. I think that was Dr. I forgot his last name. 
I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But she spoke. I don't remember. I think they both yeah, spoke. He spoke first. Oh, did he? She spoke first. Okay. Yeah. I would talk to them, too, because they really had some, you know, strong feelings about the nature of the business. But I wanted to show you that I think there was some question about what type of patients that we need, and I think uh, Summer had alluded to it's still unclear of what we have. But the, these, uh, I think I submitted these to Summer as well just recently, okay. which will also streamline the type of patients that we can come in. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Yes, I have another question, uh, Mr. Rory. Did you uh, do the work that is shown in the pictures? No, I did not. Uh, I did. I bought the, the house was, I bought the house. It was, it was set up as a rooming house. It wasn't as neat and talented. I mean, as clean as it is now, but I did pay somebody to come in there and clean it up. Meaning that, you know, some electrical need to be done because there was a fire toward the back. The floors had to be redone. Uh, paint needed to be done. Uh, <clears throat> in the pictures you'll show where Got handy, uh, handicapped accessible bathroom that had to be done. I re I took out one to uh, one tub and put a, a shower where somebody could be able to walk willing to the shower. I did those things. Okay, I have one more question. And then so it's just you bought it and it was like that all Structure. subdivided. Yeah. And uh, you uh, it just sat there vacant since 2004 till now, is that? Well, no, it, it hasn't been, but it, it's actually been, I've actually, as I said, I started as, as a rooming house several years back, and I think Miss Walker said she remembers seeing police come by there. My neighbors called me. Uh, I, I didn't want to be, uh, I didn't want to be a problem for my neighbors because I got to know my neighbors pretty well, so I shut it down. There's still two people standing there from that original time but they're models, they're model tenants. How many bathrooms is it again? It's got two full baths. Okay. Thank you. Other Thank questions? You. Now I will say that this, this place will be state and federally funded. What happens to the two tenants that are in there now? Do they stay there? They're staying there for now. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got another, for, I've got another place that I'm fixing up that they will. Oh, okay. We're just deciding if we're going to. We're just deciding yeah. if we're going to hear it next next month. Yeah. Yep. If I can, Mr. Chairman. Yes. If this is indeed going to be non nonprofit and funded by a licensed government agency, then the variance is not needed because that would go under supportive living facility, and that is a category of family, and it's permitted in all zoning districts. However, in the uptown special purpose district, you would need, I believe, a. Um, that's for use permit? Yes. Because the Fair Housing Act says that reasonable accommodations shall be made in your zoning code in to allow these in residential districts. It does not say you have to allow them in all residential zoning districts. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Um, any comments? Uh, can I get a motion to approve the rehearing of BOA 19-134? Oh, so moved. Yeah, second. Okay. Any discussion? I would, you know, I think there's some new information. I'd be in favor of the rehearing uh, and see what goes on. And maybe you can find, maybe we end up with a different variance. If you can get everything lined up where this doesn't need the variance we were going after, as, as uh, Ms. Smith just told us, there'd be some stuff to figure out. I think from my perspective or what I remember about the last one, we just didn't, we weren't real clear on whatever was going to happen there. The yeah, more clear we can be, the easier it is for us to decide. I'm not guaranteeing a yes, but like on 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 a yes when we can know what's going on. But but any other comments? Well, um, you know, I almost always agree with the chairman. Uh, in this particular instance, I do not. Uh, I think we heard about eight bedrooms last time. We heard about uh, Girls Inc. last time. We heard about the financial condition of the applicant last time, and. Uh, you know, how much it would cost to bring it up to code last time. I, I, I don't hear any new information. Uh, and um, one thing I would like to make sure, I think everybody knows this, but just in case, you know, there, there was no notice. And so anybody who, from the neighborhood, 
who might not want to make another trip up here, uh, you know, they they can't, they're not here because they didn't get notice. And so I, I, I am not for the rehearing. So, but Other comments? But they do, we do send notice, or you, or is it, whose responsibility is it to send notice? You're saying no notice for today. Oh, for yeah. today. There, oh. there would be notice for the next. Yeah, oh, yes. Notice for okay. Notice for the next. So they can still they can still have an op opportunity to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other comments? And Mr. Chairman, I have just a few questions. I think the staff could probably answer. So when we do a rehearing, the request is it the same request as before? Or is it a totally can be a totally new, be a new request? Uh, it's it can be a. Often what time, what happens when a case is reheard, conditions will be added or removed. So since if this is reheard, we will place a condition in the, to the effect of exactly what kind of use this is. So uh, it, it, if the request for the use is massaged, it'll be effectuated by a revised condition. So we could do that with the addition of a condition. Uh, Mr. Whitehead, uh, is there a provision in the UDC that says that uh, a variance cannot be granted for a use that is uh, permitted by a special use permit? Correct, unless, and there's a, a caveat to that, unless the building was built prior to the UDC uh, or developed prior to the UDC. So. Um, this would qualify under that exception. I guess that's, that's answer number one. Answer number two is uh, we could very well send uh, the applicant down the special use permit process, but I think that's, that starts to uh, give the appearance of us <laughs> uh, using procedural shenanigans. He filed a special use permit initially. We sent him to the use variance. Now we're telling them to, to refile a special use permit. So in addition to the fact that this can be a variance if he shows a hardship, right, uh, plus the fact that on our council he changed applications. So I don't know if, if I feel comfortable with making him change again. Of course, if this rehearing is rejected, he certainly could file a special use permit. That he would not be barred from doing that. Any other discussion? Well, I mean, I pointed this out in, in the uh, committee, and, and I still feel this way. Um, you know, these neighbors out here, a lot of them are elderly that live in the neighborhood. And, uh, you know, this will if they this will be the third time they have to come back. They have to pay parking. It's expensive downtown uh, because they're elderly. You know, it's hard for them to walk from a remote parking lot to City Hall. And so, uh, you know, while I uh, understand what Mr. Whitehead says about uh, making it look like, you know, it's too difficult to get this kind of use, at the same time, uh, you know, we're, we're I, I just don't know that, that the, the residents that are living there uh, that they're being necessarily treated fairly in this. And so that's all I'll say about it. But Other comments? All right, Mr. Whitehead, will you give us a roll call vote, please? Before you say, before you uh, say you're, we're, we're out of, we're, okay. we're done with that, yeah. yeah. Roll call vote, please. Ms. Baker? No. no. Mr. Claybrook? Yes. Ms. Doss? Yes. Uh, Mr. Melanzari? Yes. Uh, Ms. Garlock? Yes. And Mr. Chairman? Yes. Five eyes, one nay. You're approved. Thank you. We'll see you at the next meeting. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, with, uh, is there any announcements? I do have an announcement. I'd like to welcome to our humble meeting here uh, one of our newer council members, Mr. Smiley, who represents Super District 8. Oh, thank you for coming, Mr. Smiley. I hope you were enthralled. <laughs> 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 All right, very good. good. Uh, with that, this is adjourned.